What's going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Pinkala, and this is another episode of Pass the Barb. Today's Tuesday, April 16th. We're recording this one just a little bit late. But uh, if you're listening to this right now and you didn't do your taxes yet, you're probably going to jail, first of all. You're a day late. Yeah. Probably a lot of dollars short. short. Hope you filed an extension. Ooh, it's going to come back to bite you. But we got a... We got a pretty full squad tonight, shockingly, and uh, it's kind of a crummy day here in Minnesota. Not a lot going on, but luckily we got our boy coming back to the United States of America. Will Stolsky is back in the house tonight. Captain Bill, back, Will. Oh, it's, good, Captain it's, Bill. it's good to be yeah. back, gentlemen. Thank you. Do your curtsy. God, do your curtsy. You're, <laughs> you're looking good, brother. Do your curtsy. It's good. It's good to be back. I just got back uh, stateside yesterday, and so yeah, I've had a, a day back here, just kind of getting reorganized. But yeah, good. To, good to be back in Montana, and good to be back with you boys tonight. So yeah, and I think we'll, we don't want to leak anything too early here. We're going to get into this whole. This whole trip you around, all the craziness that went down there. But this was this was the longest past the barb on site trip we've ever sent someone on. And yeah. uh we're really excited to just hear how it all played out. Yes. You know, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, you know, thanks for all of our sponsors, you know, uh that <laughs> it's really yeah, the fans and, and that at this point, you know. To the next point, because of our sponsors and to folks like yeah. Will and our supporters, um we have become the number one outdoors podcast in the world. And I, I want to say this is maybe our eighth or ninth week holding this title up top. And we can't thank you all enough. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. For Honestly, Barb. the entire time you've been gone, Will, right there. Yeah. We've stayed, we've stayed steady. That's good. I, and, and I expected nothing less, you know, we have the best listeners in the world and, and uh, great sponsors as well. And it's, it's not easy to hold this title, but I think we will for the foreseeable future. You know, no doubt. Yeah, I would call it a movement, really, is what yeah, it is. Yeah, you, know? It's a so, you know, if it you is. want to be a part of this movement, you know, maybe, you know, like, subscribe, comment rate, below, everything. Um, Get on your there. Friends, tell you your know? mother, tell your brother. Share yeah. it around. Share, Share it around. around. Share it around. You know, Share it around. we appreciate <laughs> it. We appreciate you. So, all right. And then Sam Sobe joining us, too. What yeah, up, howdy, brother? folks. Um, and thank you. Seriously, thank you. We do want to say thank you to all the listeners. Um, this has been fun. And to have co-host Captain Bill back, this is going to be an electric episode. And we we potentially might even get Cody Honor back in studio. Uh, like you know, he's just he's a wild man. He's out there doing electrician work, and the schedule is always up in the air. So he might pop in, he might not pop in. That's something that not only you don't know, we don't know either. So there's <laughs> always just kind of you know an on edge thing we have here with pass the barb and i think you know you just need to sit down strap in and enjoy this episode yeah everyone's <laughs> along for the ride at this point exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah so this is this is a runaway train and we're just holding on for dear life so yeah and then and then our boy adam bartusik not gonna be with us tonight he is uh currently down at kentucky lake you know we talked about this on the last uh, pod that he was going down there to fish tournament he got into the uh tackle warehouse invitational on kentucky lake and yeah. uh Talk to him a little bit. Sound like practice is going okay. Definitely finding some fish. He said he's on a few, what he considers to be the right ones. So we'll see how this plays out. I, th- I think that tournament starts maybe on, is it Thursday? Thursday, does that sound right? It that potentially could be right? Thursday. Thursday yeah, or Friday. It's this sometime. week. <laughs> yeah, It will be so, this week. We'll, yeah. we'll keep an eye on it. But yeah, it's the uh, Tackle Warehouse Invitational. So I'm sure you can follow along, see all the results on there. It's an M- MLF tournament. So. And this uh, is good buddy Bart's biggest derb of his life, no doubt. This is a pro level derb that he got on the waiting list to get in. This is it's not like he's you know doing all the invitationals. He got in this one because he's on the waiting list. And this is this could be a life changing derb. It has he, you know, if he wins. It really could be. So and he might. Hey. He's good on KY. We know that. He's mm-hmm. he's good on Kentucky Lake. So past the Barb Nation will be following along, I think. And we'll just see, we'll see what he can do down there, but he's definitely keeping things pretty tight lipped right now. So I don't blame him, but um, that's kind of what's going on. We'll see if, we'll see if Cody can get with us tonight, but uh, we do want to just get into kind of what we've been up to. So I'll, I'll just kind of lead it off, dude. I, the past, uh, the past little bit here, uh, I have just been like spinning wheels on what I'm going to kind of do over the next couple months for fishing wise. And I just uh, I just ordered some new stuff for my boat, which I'm really excited about. That got uh, delivered recently, so I got a, I got a new trolling motor and everything to put on the rig, and uh, should be getting the boat this week, and then kind of going full tilt there. But planning some missions, um, 
potentially up to northern Wisconsin kind of in the next couple of weeks. Should be kind of cool. And then I did spend some time out on Tonka recently, though. And oh. let me tell you, the crappie fishing on Lake Minnetonka right now is ridiculous. Did you go Absolutely. on your boat or a buddy's boat? What'd you do? I, I went out with uh, I went out with Waldo and Connor Graham, and uh, it was super fun. We were out there. Griff was guiding out there that day too, and we got on a big mega school, and we all just kind of beat beat him to the ground. You know, how, you know how it gets out there when you get on some of those schools that are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, I mean, I've been talking to some people that have been going out more and more, and every day it just keeps getting better and better. I'm sure with this little bit of rain and cold that it probably chilled things out a little bit, but. Sure. Crappie fishing's heating up. I'm kind of ready for it to get to like, you know, fishing opener so we can actually beat the crap out of a bunch of different species. But right. I also signed up for a little derb of my own recently. Uh -oh. Do say. Uh -oh. And uh this one is in so you guys are familiar with like that fish donkey app, right? Where they yeah, do like yeah. it's like online, right? Yeah, yeah. So they have they have this tournament going right now, and I think you can still get in. So if, you, if anybody wants to compete against me knock yourself out but they're doing it's called the master ang north american master angler tournament 61 different species oh available and it's a whole year tournament oh hmm. and uh so That's i said cool. you know what i like that and so i just jumped into it uh, a couple weeks ago and did like i have barely gone out i went out a couple of days um did some carp fishing which i haven't done in, like a really long time and I saw some marked them. from that. Marked you and good buddy Ozowski. We did. We spent a oh, little time down the, in the, the river egg. bottom. Carpet. Let me tell you. Tell us some experiences from that because anytime you fish with good buddy Ozowski, he, he's a buddy of, of the whole podcast. Yeah, he's a friend he's of really, the show for sure. He's this seven foot tall man with the passion for fishing of 10 men. And he's just a unique character from hunting agates to going to local breweries to basically catching anything that swims. Andrew's a character. And if Amazing. you out, remember when he would get the chubs all the time, he'd catch the mm -hmm. chubs on the, he'd had the best bait in the entire Metro area. He would catch the Always. chubs on the he's line. He's been around. He's been he's, around. He's seen some things. Tell yeah. one story from when you were fishing with Andrew. There has to be five. So at least tell I, one. Well, okay, I'll I'll give you one and a half. How about that? Okay, okay, that works. I'll start with the half. But so I I was I actually called him because I was like, hey, like I'm specifically look like I know I have a narrow window here. I'm looking for like on this tournament, a lot of the species are rough fish, right? So like different types of suckers, carp, whatever, right? And I know he spends a lot of time catching bait, and I was like kind of trying to key in on like one sucker run somewhere that I could potentially get in on. We kind of chatted. We're like, okay, let's check these couple of spots. He was going to check some. So I had one spot that's actually pretty close to where he lives. And I told mom, I'm going to go check this probably, you know, tonight after work, you know? And, and he's like, I don't really know what you're talking about. I was like, well, let's see if it even is good. So I went down there, checked it and there was no suckers there, but it was absolutely loaded with carp, like pretty insane amount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they looked, like they'd be pretty easy to catch. So I called him back and I was like, Hey dude, like, uh, I don't have any, like the sucker stuff didn't pan out, but I was like, there's so many carp down here and I brought no rods. So I'm like, I'm going to drive home and, uh, I'll send you the pan. Like if you're interested or whatever. And I totally thought he was just gonna be like, no, but he's like, he didn't know the spot. And he was like, so intrigued. Cause he's like, I've never even heard of this place or like seen this or whatever. So he's like, can I come? And I was like, absolutely. So, we both show up down there and uh, whatever we go down there, we proceed to figure out how to catch some of these fish. Just, it was super fun. We caught some big ones the first day. We ended up going back the day. So that first, that first night though. So I won't give away, you know, this is a secret honey. Right. Hole car well, well, we gotta be, we just, we don't want to give this. it all away. We want to be a little tight lipped here, but this is a fairly urban setting where this goes down. <laughs> no <laughs> <Okay>. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> if you're with Drewski, no okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, as people do in the metro area, they tend to get a little weird when things get dark outside. And so we were down there carping away. Time kind of got away from us. And next thing you know, it's the middle of the night. And uh, we got a little bit of a hike back to the old truck. <laughs> and a, a good portion of this is through like, like, woods wooded area sure you know 
And uh, so we're, we're making our way through there and uh, we get about halfway out and uh, this gentleman comes stumbling out of the woods. And so mind you, we don't have any like lights, nothing. We're just walking, just chatting, walking down this trail. And this guy comes stumbling out of the woods and he's dragging like a big something on it. And he's carrying some shit that looks very weird in the dark. Right. We're kind of like, holy shit. And he came out like, I'll say maybe like 20, 30 feet ahead of us, right onto the trail. And we're, it's like dark. He's kind of backlit by some buildings up the thing. And he's like mumbling. And we're like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> like, this is going to so be something cool. here. But the trail's kind of wide. He's kind of like on one side, we're on the other. And we're just going to like walk past. I'm hoping we're just going to cruise by this guy and not even acknowledge that he's there. Your first thought was, this is not a fellow angler. No, no, <laughs> no. This isn't a guy that's out here carp fishing. No, no, no. This, this, this looked like someone that I probably didn't have a lot in common with at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so... You know, kind of like, you know, like on a truck, like if you're on like kind of like a truck trail, right? There's like plenty of room to just kind of like walk by people, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you kind of stay on your side. Well, this guy, as he's coming closer, he's like, we, we can't hear what he's like kind of mumbling, but as he's coming closer, he just starts like loudly saying, where are you going? Like a lot of times in a row. <laughs> and we're like this is weird and then he kind of squares up like right in the middle of the trail oh, as he's coming closer and we're like because you know we're kind of like going off to the side like hey we're gonna give him some space here and like yeah totally squares up in the middle of the trail with like all this shit on him or whatever and now he's like coming and we're like oh my god like we're gonna have to kill this guy <laughs> literally and but it's like i said it's completely dark and there's like no moon either we have no light nothing and we're just carrying like a bunch of fishing rods and like a net and stuff. Like, what are we going to do? You know? Right. So I'm like, oh my God. And this guy Netflix is like, man. yeah, I don't know <laughs> if he's like all meffed up on something and get him in the bag. And so we, <laughs> me, me and Ozowski no, are literally like, you know, he's like so, so I'm not like very tall. He's very tall. Right. Yeah. And so he, uh, <laughs> he's like, he's like in front of me, like kind of like trying to get around this guy. So now I, I can see nothing and he kind of cuts it in front of me. And so I, all of a sudden it's just me and Ozowski like stumbling off the road, like into the, the ditch next to the road, trying to get past this guy. And he's still like yelling at us or whatever we get by. And then we just like jetted up this hill. Like, I, dude, we just got the hell out of there. And the whole time, like we can hear the guy like down there yelling and we're like in the, in the river bottom. Right. And the guy, so after we pass him, right. I don't know what the deal was. He just continues out into the darkness with all his shit out into the river bottom. And we just like jetted up to the truck. And we're like, we're leaving now. Like we're gone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And then the next night, just to put a bow on this one, the next night we're like, we're definitely not staying till dark tonight. Yeah. Cause we came back for day two and uh, we ended up going further, like out this where we were fishing. We ended up at the same spot. And then we went further down the river. And then we stayed at that spot till dark. So and then we had to come out even like twice the distance in the dark, but we didn't end up running in the guy again. So I don't know. I don't know where he went, but that was the deal. Welcome to welcome to Metro. Hanging with Drewski. Hang with Drewski. Uh -oh. uh oh. Oh, there he is. Go there he is. Matt. Oh boy. Ladies what are you and gentlemen, macking on? Put the tinfoil away. Anybody who's just I'm listening, you know, we we've got connection with with another co-host of ours, Cody Honor, a Wisconsin native. How's it Who's, going, fellas? He's you, diving in. You got some Culver's there? What do you got? <laughs> Culver's. Don't be mad. <laughs> Rothschild's ritzy, dude. We got bougie five guys here. Oh, my God. Damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Very nice. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible. It is, it is fantastic. These wow. fries, can't get enough. <laughs> God damn, you're in a good mood tonight. I'm fantastic. I am fantastic. <laughs> oh, I was just recapping a little carpin story from the weekend here. Ooh. Mm, yeah. mm, I, think, I think we should dive right into Cody. Current events. What's been going on with you? What'd you do this weekend? Dude, we've been smashing fish. <laughs> <laughs> we have been whacking tail. I'm not gonna lie to you. We've been crushing fish lately. What, what, morning, where, what kind of fish? Oh. <laughs> Honestly, 
Will, what are you sucking on? <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll they get told there. me I couldn't tell because it's a new segment. We'll get right, there. Right, God right. damn. All right. Do we do we break this segment to, to go what we've been drinking really quick around the I horn? Say, yeah, let's, do, let's, let's do a round. Let's do a round table quick. Yeah. All right. All right. We're we're cutting to you. We've only done this segment a few times, but now that we got Will back, he's never been involved. So here we're gonna go. This this is a segment. Uh, Will, we're calling what you've been drinking. What you've been drinking. I like it. And just break us down. What what is the active cocktail in your life right so now? So this is kind of my. Uh, I'll I'll start. Uh, this is sort of my summer. Summer summertime drink, or at least last summer it was, and this summer I'm sure it will be too. So this is called Luna Azul, Luna Azul Tequila. It's not it's not the cheapest, but it's not the most expensive. <laughs> it's kind of right in the middle. I think this costs uh, about thirty five bucks for one seven five. So what you do is you pour that into your uh, whatever Yeti here. So you do that, and then you're gonna do one moment. And then you're going to squeeze a lime about this size. Maybe a would that be about a quarter slice? Yeah. Squeeze that. And then you're going to really get it in there and then just drop the whole thing in there. And then you're going to top it all off with a little bit of lime LaCroix here. Oh, no, that is what I'm talking about. So then we're just going to splash it off the top. I'm sort of very like a, with it's it. Like a, it's like a ranch water, you know, kind of a take on a classic sort of, you know, South Texas ranch water. And that's all that's all there is to it. It's refreshing on a hot summer's day. And uh you don't feel real bloated, you know, which is nice. And let's see. I'm with it, it on that one. Incredible. <clears throat> there Damn it is. LaCroix. That was a full like mixology that what you've been drinking has never seen. Well, it's nice because I have everything <laughs> at my disposal right here. The LaCroix <laughs> are here, the limes are there, <laughs> the Luna Sewell is here. Yeah. At your fingertips. Yes, labels out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love tequila. It's I'm, I'm happy to be back on it. So now let's go around the table. What's everyone else drinking? Sobe, where you at? What do you got? Oh boy. So I'm just gonna go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, this, is, this are you is guys about. Glitching or are you guys not seeing any glitching? Oh, they you're glitching. glitching. It's, it's, no, uh, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm right here. No, you're not. <laughs> I don't think so, dude. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. I'm just going to rattle one off. Red Bull. This has been the key to my success lately. This is what I've been drinking. Red, Red Bull. Bull. Solo. Incredible. Red Bull. Is that sugar-free? Absolutely. You got to do sugar-free. Love it. Love it. That's the you, yes. All right. Only fine gentlemen will understand. Yes. 100%. It's, it's sugar-free Red Bulls and white monsters. White Very monsters. Yes. White my uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm with Well, it. look at you. Yeah, I would. Yeah, he goes bit. international one time and he's dialed. <laughs> and here he comes back. <laughs> I agree, sugar free all the way. Yep. So, right. what's going on down there in the bottom right corner? We're not so sure. <laughs> There's a lot going on down there, dude. Oh boy, we've lost Sobe. Now, all right, Ryan, what are I'll, you drinking? I'll jump in here. Well, tonight, interestingly, keeping her pretty tame here. I'm trying to hydrate, fellas. I've been on. I've been on a gallon a day of straight agua. All right, That's trying to get, go, man. trying to keep things hydrated, keep mm -hmm. that you know the skin right. But here, yeah. I got to show you boys this. So I got on this one. So Will and I, before we jumped on, we were talking Costa Rica a little bit. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a chance to talk to him since I went there. Got on this drink there, and I think based on what you just drank, you would like this a lot. So this is oh, I got the bottle here because so you you can only get this in Costa Rica, I guess. So you have to like okay. literally go there and buy it. So Brought a bunch back. This right here, it's called Cacique. Okay, I like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a this huh. is a, a a guava. Oh, sure. Liquor, right? And basically that and squirt, dude. Oh, squirt! Ooh. That's insane. Under, underrated. Insane. But there's no. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it does have alcohol in it. It's like a liqueur. liqueur. Oh no! This yeah, this shit is like <laughs> this. It's like it's like a it's like a guava like vodka basically. Oh, I'm 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 I'm. I'm on with that. I need to get so, some of that. Yeah, it's in my called life. Cacique. So I don't know. Maybe you can find it somewhere else. But mm -hmm. based on what we found there, you could only get it there. Probably not know. in Montana. Probably not, dude. Probably not. But that's it right there. Cacique. I like that. It's okay. Shit, and Sylvie nice. is gone. Uh, 
We'll just sit. We'll, oh, he's back. He's back. Here we go. Here we go. Back. Kasik. Kasik. That's a little better. Excuse. What you been drinking, brother? Okay. K kind of an influence from Stolsky. Um, it's about a quarter slice of lime right here. Oh, um, nice. That's the perfect um, and it's, just, it's a classic Corona extra. Oh. oh. oh I think oh. as we enter summer. Damn it. Early do the flip. Spring, Are you going to do the flip? Do the flip. Yeah. Actually, if you if you almost like half flip it and put it in the bottle, the lime gets lodged right here. But then all the beer has to pass through the lime. That's true. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do the filter, and it's but really you don't you don't get the aroma of the. Oh, oh wow. God! Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, oh, nice. there it done. Is. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's not an easy maneuver to pull yeah. off. It's I've well screwed done, it. Sir. I've screwed it up many a time. Samwise. Samwise. Yeah. Connor. Yeah. Connor showed me the the salt and lime combo. Oh, so, oh. Ooh, I like that. Very I good. Know. Yeah, I like that. Pacifico, Pacifico, seen. Pacifico salt lime combo. Sure. Ooh, so that's you just put a little bit of salt up there. Mm -hmm. Salt in the beer, salt mm -hmm. on the rim, and it's just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. Boys, I do have to ask because I've seen I've seen it around on the social medias lately. I've not partaken yet, but has anybody cracked the first shandy of the season? No, oh, I, I have not. I have. It seems early. Right. It seems too early it, for that. It was. We had a couple 70 degree days. People got rowdy. Shandies were open. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's soon, I'd imagine. I yeah, I haven't even <laughs> bought any yet. So but no, sir. it's out there. It's out there. There's shandies out on the the you know the areas. It's on the horizon. Sir. Yes. They're available. All right. I would say well, that, fishing, Wisconsin. That's oh. when that's when it's gonna happen. Yeah. It's gonna have to. Yeah. I don't see a way around it. <laughs> One way or another. All right. Well, that was good. I, that was like the best what you've been drinking ever, I think. That was good. I'm glad I got to get introduced to the segment. Incredible. Thank you. Incredible. We'll, we'll, like we'll circle back on that eventually. But Let's go right. Let's go back to current events. Yeah, Cody's been catching tail, and, and I want to know what kind of tail. He's been yeah. whacking tail. Let's, let's get back on the tail. tail. Yeah, you're right. Easy, boys. Easy, boys. No, the, the fishing has been phenomenal lately. Like, we are back. I, I don't want to. We're back. We're in the zone. We're in the zone. In the zoo. In yep. the zoo. Steelhead fishing, walleye fishing, both of which have been just absolutely phenomenal. And I got to hand it to you, Will. I understand why you moved out to Bozeman. I get well, it. I'm not in Bozeman. Let's... Well, I mean, at once upon okay. a time. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I thought it was a little, but I understand now. Well, it is. I it, get it. It, it is a little. <laughs> yes i no it has been awesome like You're that is it. that is a whole new obsession You're digging I, it. yeah i awesome. love it good and good i've been i have been like looking up every steelhead video <laughs> i have been looking up every single steelhead video i can come across and buying every single bead every bead like come, understanding come, how to tie come fish, spawn. Come fish with me on the clear water hell yes yeah, yes. 40 pounders, brother. Dude, amazing. Yeah. So who are you I watching? Fish... Are you on are you on like a I don't even fishing know. now? What? I don't even know. Like Eric Hadia has been up on my feet a bunch. Well, of that's like, I mean... All right. I mean, that's <laughs> that just pops up anyways, but it has been awesome. <laughs> so much fun. It's like I was trying to describe it to someone, and I'm like, you know what? It's like smallmouth bed fishing for deer. If you combine okay. those when they're like super shallow and you can see them, yeah, yeah. you gotta yeah, sneak yeah. up on them. Because I'm like, really that is it. Spooky. Yeah. It's, a little okay. spot oh, yeah. And stock. it's kind of spot and stock style. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're dealing yeah. with like heavy pressured streams and stuff where someone's been fishing that fish like for, for the sure. Last 40 and you gotta minutes. have the right. You gotta have the right bead. It's gotta be perfect. Oh it's yeah. Perfect. They're, perfect. There's honestly yeah, they're know. they're like super anal about like technique like how the bait is coming, how to like, oh, yeah. it is, it is awesome. It is a whole new realm that uh, my eyes are not open to. And I am ass. digging it, dude. Yeah, I am digging it. Awesome. I, cool. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a, only a certain size limit that you can actually catch though. Cause I hooked one. It was a, it looked like a shark swimming through the river. And I'm like, I fished for it for honestly, a total of like five hours. I fished for it for two hours into the night and then i camped out there fish for it for two and a half hours that morning i hooked it it immediately like ran upstream with like eight pound test in my like spinning combo yeah and jumped over a tree it was gone i'm like well right. there's i mean how do you even catch that 
Yeah. I don't even know how you bring that in. Well, those <laughs> like, are what I, we call the uncatchables. That's what it seemed like. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. there's yeah. no way. I, I don't exist, think there's any but... way. Yeah, there's something you can never catch. You, know? you need a hell of a net man is what it sounds like. Dude, yeah. I need I need like 40 net man for that thing. Like you it need, was what you need is a sane net that goes the entire Ooh. stretch of the river. That's exactly right. I need mm -hmm. I need that and I need a snagging hook with like yeah. goat rope. Just, oh, we're yeah, really dialing in this steelhead program. I'm writing get, some shit down here. Get kind you of know, a lost on them. Yeah, you know, need the big tall bot snagger. Uh huh. I mm. found one at a culvert the other day. I'm like, what is? It? Oh, I know what this is. Then he's and it's like oh. it's like a seven on musky treble, perfectly the, sharpened. Yeah, perfectly with, laid with, with the lead at the bottom of it. Yeah, That's absolutely. the best. The dude yeah. just like, leaves it there because he's like, I don't know where that came from. I'm gonna be. I was just here. Not mine. Where, where in Wisconsin were you, Cody? Were you like don't, don't and Cody, don't give out too much info. I ain't I ain't too, telling you shit, where's man. the exact stream in town and, and parking lot and at, we'll we'll what post the, the pen. What we'll the post the pen <laughs> What's a good access point if a guy wanted to go do that? Yeah. <laughs> no, like where in Wisconsin though? Northeast, southwest, eastern, like eastern Wisconsin. Okay. Eastern Wisconsin on the the bay side, not the or I'm sorry, the lake side, not the bay side. Nice. On some Lake Michigan tributaries. Tribs, man. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's fun. The tribs. Tribs, I, brother. It is, it is a hilarious time. Cody, and then if, if you come and you fish for the – and I don't want to – I don't want this to come I'm, off. I'm sure – I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> Long way. But if you come and you catch – the real, the real one? steelhead. Yep. Come no, from the yeah, ocean. Yeah, then your mind is going to – it's just going to be exploded. You'll be like, oh, my <laughs> gosh, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm leaving the Midwest. I mean, they are like – but they're the same way in those trips you guys fish because it's the same fish. But like, yeah, I mean they they are so badass. I in my they're opinion, awesome. steelhead are the coolest fish that swim. Dude, so. they're they're like I I wanted to fish for them for the longest yeah. time. Like seriously, like spend and dedicate time towards it. Sure, because I have friends who do it and they always talk to me about it. I'm like, eh, whatever. Oh, man. but now I finally did it. You get it? Yeah, it clicks. The, oh, it clicks. the first day I went, I was so frustrated. Yeah. I'm like, you motherfuckers. I'm like, I am going to catch you. What the hell am I doing wrong? And the next time I went back, like, it just clicked. And right. I'm like, oh. Then it, like, makes okay. sense. Like, I mean, it's. That is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely they're, awesome. They're I badass would, fish. I think they're the coolest. Hell yeah. The coolest fish that swims. 100%. It's, it's yeah. literally, I mean, I was thinking about it as I'm, like, walking the streams. I'm like, what is this like? It is literally, like, bed fishing. A smallmouth bass, but hunting for a deer. It's like if you combine oh, those two, it's, it's that pretty, is it's, that's a pretty good description. You know, like they're super moody. Every fish is individual. Oh, they're so moody. They're, so, like yeah. it's it is make, like the ultimate fish sight fishing, though. It really, you is. know, like hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, especially when yeah. you're fishing like smaller streams, like I was fishing, where it is all sight fishing, sure. like yeah. no float fishing. Yeah, and I can say that now. No float fishing because I'm a big steelhead guy now. Yeah. <laughs> but Were you center um, pinning them. Were you using the oh, <laughs> ran into a ran into a real real you deal pin, Sims guy the other day. Pinners. Oh man. He was he was fluting on that fish whistle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they're bad. Like, it is. I, I will I think they're the coolest. Fish I'm so I'm so mad that I wasted so much time not fishing for them. Yeah. That I am going, I've gone every single weekend to do it now. Yeah. Uh, it's so much fun. Well, now you got to, you got to come to the coast. You got to come fish. Like. The real ones. No, <laughs> and I don't, and I, and I. I oh, I know. Cause there was a, there was a photographer that was on a photo shoot with us. He's like, oh, you have those Michigan little bitchy ones, don't you? Oh, like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, we have the real ones out in Washington. I'm like, oh, all right, all right, man, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah. There's a lot of discrepancies mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. it's but, like the but, gear so like, versus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it is. It's very cool to catch one that came from the from. Oh the yeah, yeah, all. yeah. When they travel what? all the way to Montana from almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's insane. They used to go all the way to Wyoming before they dammed up the snake. They were all the way in in that's Wyoming. Ins that's incredible. That is amazing. Crazy. Fish. Amazing fish. But onward. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So Cody, run us back because oh, uh, what you? It looked like you did some stuff for your like that weekend around your birthday a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Run it, run us back on that because I didn't get to hear about this. I did see some really good snaps though. Yeah, so. it was fantastic. It was fantastic. So we uh, we went to every weekend or like every one of my birthdays. It is no fail. It is the best walleye fishing day for whatever reason. Like. April 4th, if you got nothing to do, go walleye fishing. It is always the best date. It's like perfect with in sync for fish moving up the rivers. So that's what I've done the last like 10 to 15 years, right? Well, lo and behold, I'm kind of looking at it right now. But um, so we went, she, the girlfriend asked me, what do you want to do for your birthday? I'm like, we're going fishing. I, do you want to get a hotel? I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope we're going truck fishing what is truck fishing <laughs> we're sleeping in the truck you in the office baby <laughs> and, and she's like well what like how long are we fishing i'm like we don't take breaks forever <laughs> we don't take breaks we fish <laughs> do you get it oh like Too if, if she is <laughs> We don't take breaks. <laughs> like, if she survives this weekend, like, that's when I know. If she can survive this weekend, I definitely know. Well, we went, let's see, we went fishing on the Menominee. She caught her first fish. I think it might have been her first fish. Uh, 28 inch walleye, like, literally wow. second cast. My, my third cast, I caught like a 30 and a half incher. And it just proceeded to be just knockout lights out, just ridiculous night. And went in, took a nap in the truck. Next thing we go, we go off to uh, Steelhead Fish on the other side of the bay. And it was phenomenal. Like, cannot cannot describe how fun it was. Like, we caught probably 30 Steelhead that day. Like, lights out. Like, found a really good stream where it was like, we were float fishing. I'm talking like I'm an expert. I, I don't really know what's going on. I'm looking at Will. But like the float, I'm like, all right, I'm going to give you a demonstration, like kind of how I do it, whatever. This is how you control the float. This is whatever. When it gets to this point, you can just bring it back in, cast it out again. And I'm like, all right, so when it gets right here, I like lay my line over and mend it, it should go mend down. It, mend it. Mend it. Mend it. There we go. That's the term. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And I'm like, you mend know, mend your line. And yes. I'm like, and it should go down. There's a, there's a little, there's a little spot right here. It should go down right there. Boop. Bobber goes down. I'm like, here, here's Boop. the rod, Leslie. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing ever when oh. it goes down? I mean, they suck it down. Dude, it's, it's like, like a, it's not a tick, tick, tick. It's, oh, it's like, a boom. like, and you got to be quick with it. And it makes a noise when it I goes know it down. does. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's badass. I, Some, yeah. Someone said she has never been more attracted to me. In her entire life. And I'm like. You're like, bingo. This is awesome. (laughs) We're going fishing every single weekend. Yeah, this is perfect. (laughs) But it was fantastic. Yeah, fishing's been phenomenal, actually. It has been so much fun. Good. So, Cody's a steelheader. Fuck yeah, I'm a steelheader. I I just, I (laughs) still haven't gotten to the the point where I'm like buying the bags and stuff to get. Yeah, yeah. I've been using. I, I like bummed a bunch off of my buddy and then otherwise I've just been using beads like plastic beads and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, I mean, you, you will reach a point. I mean, the, the way this thing is progressing, this is what's going to happen. It's going fast. We're on a, we're on a highway, right? Yeah, you are, you're, on a, right now. you're on a trajectory yes. and this is how it works. The steel head <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to give you the quick rundown of how it okay. happens. So, now, like you're into it, and you're using the spinning rod, right? With the, yep. with the you know, and then yep. soon you'll probably change to the fly rod, but you'll still be fishing them the same way, identical to the spinning rod, you know? <laughs> with a bobber and a strike indicator. Yes, right, right? strike indicator because you're but using a fly you're rod. Gonna, but then you're going to hit a point, and I recently just hit this point where, then you're going to say, okay, like that was that's easy enough. Now I'm going to use a spay rod, you know, oh. two handed, and I'm going to swing. A stream, and I'm and I'm not going to catch anything for weeks, weeks. That's fun on. though. That's right, that's exactly. fantastic. And then you're going to get a grab. Yeah, that's what we call, we get a grab. 
Uh, oh, we got to oh. grab, you know, it's like musky fishing. Almost. Oh, I got to grab. Wow. That was yeah. really good. Exciting. And then you'll just, and then you'll only spay fish from there on out. That's, that's the, that's because the progression of it. Spay Be, because the other people are losers for, you know, actually. Exactly. Fish. They, it, the thing about spay fishing <laughs> is you're better than everyone else. Oh yeah. But yeah. you don't have to catch We're them. Better you, better, which is yeah, we we We're better than you. We better than you and we know it. You know, it's Mike Goodman. W-H-I-T. <laughs> Well, e. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what's gonna happen to you it, it happened, is oh it i totally to me, i totally so. foresee it because yeah i've been like locked in like yeah. we are running streams we are yeah. running as fast yes. as we can and like i am dude the, the one day i i booked like 10 and a half miles in my waiters right just it. Cruising. 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 looking for them but yeah, awesome. that's that's what's gonna happen. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna move to Oregon, probably on the coast. You we know, have been Halem, talking about Halem that. Metro. Someone lived up. Yeah. You'll regret area. it, but you'll still do it. But we'll yeah, do you'll. It. I mean, you're gonna end up broke and divorced, but it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a great trip. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> a great trip. That's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a great two year trip. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's gonna be sweet. <laughs> Welcome to the new chapter. Welcome to the new chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, swim mates out. Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> but the amount of skis you're gonna own, dude. Oh, yeah. crazy. Gonna, dude, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna <laughs> smoke so much weed on this quest. You're gonna be keeping oh, the tags God. on your batteries from Battery Plus for your <laughs> kicker. <laughs> And then you're going to be exchanging them at the end of the season for money. That's what will happen. But it'll be oh, good. Man. I mean, you'll probably. I'll, I'll get a Tacoma. Yeah. Like, you'll look you good know. in a fanny pack, too. Cody would really look good in a fanny pack. Absolutely. Like, but saddle, hey, anything satchel. could happen. Anything could happen. But yeah. we got to, we got to, we got to persevere here. We got to yeah. keep moving. Um, that's awesome, though, Cody. That's, that's, that's great. Dude, it, I'm glad, it, I, I'm glad like, you're into it. I'm glad I you're wanted, into it. I wanted to talk to you about it because it, it yeah. has been. It's blast. awesome. They're it badass so fish, fun. aren't they? They're they are, so cool. It blew so my mind. Cool. They yeah. are. They're the coolest. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. They're my favorite. No it's wow. slowly becoming my favorite fish. Like, Incredible. honestly. And I've been like four weekends or three weekends. Yeah, they're, they're, they are. I mean, I think they're the most badass fish this one. I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Salud. Sam, what about you? Salud. Um, well, I'm I'm not infected with this Western bug called. Uh, the We're better than you. I've been I've been getting some grabs in myself recently. Oh, yeah, oh I bet you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vision's, vision's been good. Yeah, we've been left. We've been right. We've been better. Um, good buddy Hayes and I, we were just out kind of right where Cody's been fishing too, over in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. on those tributaries, you know, by the Great Lakes. And yeah, walleye fishing was wicked good. We hit the spawn, yeah. wicked good. And it was, it was, I feel like we've never been there when it's kind of gone down and they've been in the river. So it's kind of a fun, like for you to live there, Cody, like you've experienced it many times. I, I was going to say, like, I, I saw your, your video and I'm like, I don't think he's over here, but that is, I know where that is. I like, <laughs> I know that exact spot. Like I've weighed that spot. Yeah. And, uh, and then I saw the size of the fish. I'm like, oh yeah, definitely that spot. Definitely yeah, 100%. and so that was that was cool. Anytime you're in waders, like pounding big walleye, it's so much like, fun. <laughs> there's just like a essence about it where you're like in in small river holding big mm -hmm. fish. Yeah. Like it's just cool, and and even getting to hop in the boat with some other buddies out there and just and popping on the lake and just kind of the mouth. Of some of those trips we pounded some yep. walleyes, and then from there, um, past couple days, uh, we've been out by Webster, South Dakota, and that's like a super underrated area and i feel like i haven't barely scratched the surface it's like the prairie pond area and if you look at it on a map like webster south dakota there's there's more lakes out there than a Manaqua or a brainerd or anything there's really? lakes out there and they're loaded with walleyes and smallmouth and and they're cool you know they're like there's no seasons out there so you can <laughs> smallmouth and, and walleye oh so, yeah it's just been a like lot many of other people fishing no, dude, no. It's just it doesn't get publicity, huh. and people aren't out there. Even the locals oh, are like, we don't fish much out here. People don't fish, and then it gets any tourism that come in. People are some of them are walleye fishermen, and but there's wicked smallmouth opportunity out there. Like, good. I don't know if you know who Lyle is. Lyle, hell, he's got those. Uh, oh, the hair. 
Yeah, he's got a guy with hair. Yeah, yeah. a while with the long hair. Yeah, he's got the state record small mouth, and that's from yeah. like in that area and stuff like that. And it's, yeah, it's just it's from the Twin Cities. It's only like three and a half, four hours away, but nobody ever goes there. And that was our first time out there too. So that's caught a cool. bunch of white bass too. Those are those are wicked fun, mm -hmm. and they get big out there. So that was yeah, just cool. Cool. Like you guys were mad on the harvest too. We were, we were knife and walleyes heavy because when we were in Wisconsin, it was like the spawn and those fish are big and you are allowed to take one, but we spared them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a, yeah. We, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Say. No, no, no. Say what you're going to say. No, I was going to say like, it's only one over 28 inches. So it's like, do you want to, right. do you want to knife this one? This... And then if you do, they slash your tires. So yeah. Or, <laughs> you know, you die of lead poisoning because the thing has been around for you know 25 years or whatever yeah but, and you just feel dirty because it's like the spawn is oh, right it's like that eyes. yeah yep like the amount of fish that are yeah i mean you know what i'm talking about but like they're rubbing against your boot trying yeah. to spawn yeah like the males will it's that ridiculous it's like you're like stepping on them. Shit. It's, it really you're is. stepping on them so but then when we went to South Dakota and we're catching a bunch of like 16 inches, we're like, oh yeah, knife, knife, knife. Like, oh, so yeah. we, we, we took ours out yeah, there. Fuck so them kids. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, we, we flayed some white bass and the meat looks not bad. There's just yeah. like like a red film on the back of it, almost like a film like that salmon would have, you know? Yeah. You know, it's it's yep. gross or whatever. They say if you take that off, it can be good. So it, we, is, we it is good. Some. It is good. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. You, you, you'll you, like it. But yeah. I, I've eaten a lot of white bass from Wisconsin or where from all over, dude. Come like on forever from the wolf. You ever fish for, yeah. You ever fish for him out there? I've, I've never fished for him there. I know like that it goes down there. I I mean, you talk but, to any redneck around that area, yeah. they're going white bass fishing. Oh, I'm sure they are. No, I've, I've kept them out of, out of the Mississippi, out of the St. Croix, huh. the vermilion. Do you take that red vermilion? Back? Vermilion has white bass. Over here. Oh. Vermilion River. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh yeah, so the yeah, so they have like a really thick bloodline, is what it is. So like if you if you split the fillet, like you're gonna take the pin bones out, you know, but you just go mm -hmm. all the way to the tail and just take that whole middle out with the there's a lot of red meat on there. You'll you'll clear most of that out. It's not it's not that you can't eat it, it just it's like that's where a lot of the 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 like weirdness is flavor in there that dark sure. red blood meat sure. but other than that it's good meat yeah plus they're like the limits are usually like pretty high on them compared to like any oh, some yeah. places don't even have a limit some it's like Dude, 25 it's like 25 it's, it's yeah. like bluegill fishing i'm like i know yeah. they're you're gonna let me keep yeah and they're big like in a lot of places they yeah. get like you know like four or five pounds is like a pretty solid one but, <laughs> yeah, yeah eradicate the population and kill them all. Them, like hitting kill the them all. like like you'd throw for bass you oh yeah and it was they like oh, it was sick like you mm -hmm. <laughs> all right let's get into will will all right dive in dive into so, current events dive into unso current events just talk to us argentina is well, looking different well how about this let's doing? let's start it off this way because i'm sure you have some stories that are like on top of your mind that you definitely want to tell i think let's just run down Let's run down. We have we have some fan submitted questions. Yeah, let's do the Q. We let's have, do the Q and A because I think that will spark. Yeah, so let's off. we'll start with that. We'll all go like I think we all have at least some questions, uh, yeah. and then we have some questions that were sent into us. So maybe we'll start with those, the ones that are actually from like Instagram. We threw out a a little poll on there to have people send in um, things they were curious about, and we did get some responses. A Shout lot of them are listen. quite similar, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but so I, the, I might lump some of these together. Sure, you can do a sort of a sort of a conglomerate. Similar. So I'll, I'll wait for these boys to get back. But I do, I do also have five questions right out the gate here, just to verify that you did in fact go to Argentina. Oh, we got some Argentina, like Argentina, like trivia. trivia. Oh no. <laughs> Because we got to be sure about this. Oh no! So I'll just lead it off while we're waiting for these other guys. So we got we got five five heavy hitters right out of the game. Okay. Here. All right. So if if you pass, you got to get three of five here. Okay. Or we're yeah. not even going to continue this. Sure, 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 sure. I right. like it. Question number one: What is the capital of Argentina? 
Um, Buenos Aires. That's correct. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Strong start. All right. Let's see here. Which ocean borders Argentina's eastern shore? The eastern shore? Correct, sir. The, the Atlantic. Shore. Okay. I'm two. Well That's done. Good. Maybe he was there. True or false? There are no cougars in Argentina. False. That is correct. Okay. I'm there. Let's do the other two. Now that you've been to Patagonia, do you feel superior to everyone else that you see wearing Patagonia clothing? Yes. One hundred percent. Yes. That kind of caught me off guard, Ryan. Dude, I was thinking it was going to be a trivial question. I'm good. I'm glad that you answered it appropriately as well. So that one checks out. <laughs> and I guess yeah. there were only four because I, I wrote and, one through five, but there's only four questions here. So and, I think and, and to add to the Patagonia thing, you know, the outline of Patagonia, you know? Yeah, the logo. Yeah. Yeah. So that logo, that's in <laughs> Southern Patagonia in Charlton. Uh, and that's the Fitzroy. It's called that that big peak on the yep. Patagonia logo. and. And I've been there, so. <laughs> oh God damn! You imagine just just eyeing up somebody's clothing in the mall and be like, you know, the skyline isn't exactly like that. That looks. That <laughs> he's looks gonna little... he's gonna open with that at the bars now. When that I was there, a off. It didn't. It didn't look exactly like. That. It's not quite right there. That's off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's oh incredible. my God! The girls in Craig won't know what hit them, dude. <laughs> what girls in Craig? <laughs> There's like half a girl in Craig right now. With oh, Cody just getting back, you got to just tell Cody that last trivia question. Oh, I, I just asked Will if now that he's actually been to Patagonia, if he feels far superior to everyone else that wears Patagonia. <laughs> and he answered yes, which yeah. I think is true. I... 100% yes. I said. Like, do you – do you just forego like Sims waiters? Like you just buy straight Patagonia now because you have that right? It's no, God given right now. No, if they, sent the me a pair, if they sent me a pair, if they're listening, of course I'd love to wear a pair of. Not that. to <laughs> say, yeah, not to <laughs> say. See, I think having been there gives you the all G3s. the right to just G4s. never wear it. You know, I got G3s. G3s? G3s. We're the same. Yeah, I know. We are the We're same. We're basically on the same one level. Like. Us. <laughs> same level of i got fishing. g3s i mean yeah. i'd love to have the zipper but it's spendy you know what happened to the drift it is the drifts were awesome drift they make a good set of waiters but they got leaky they pinholed on oh me. boy but uh neither here nor there do so. you here's a here's a question for you so i was kind of a like dummy when i was buying these waiters or when i ordered these waiters yeah and i just got like the straight you know, being used to Cabela's or Gander Mountain sure. type waiters that are like the boot is already in them. Yeah. Like I fucked up, didn't I? Like <laughs> you want you want the stocking foot and then the the shoe, don't you? Well, yeah, unless you're fishing and it's really cold, then the boot foots are really nice, you know. I mean yeah. they're yeah. like if you're gonna only fish if you think about it this way, if you're only gonna fish in the spring and the fall with your waiters, that's kind of what I'm doing. I think the boot foots are the way to go. I mean, really? Yeah, if, I, really? I, if you're going to hike a lot, though, having the stocking foot. See, that is, nice. is, more that is where that is. Yeah. Where There's I'm the like trade off. Into issues. There's the trade off. So I wear my stock. I wear my, um, well, I don't have boot foots, but I would like a pair basically for the spring. So you can pack up like layers on your feet. Like, yeah. And like, like they, those socks. Sims, the Sims boot foots. Well, do you have them? Is that what you have? Yeah. Yep. I guess they're, the they're nice boots, right? They like, are. They are warm ish, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, like I, I've never had a problem with yeah. getting cold in them. So I'd love a pair of boot foots for like basically April into like the first week of May and then switch over to the stocking foots until Memorial Day weekend. And then I never wear waders. I hate wearing the waders. Uh, oh, they, then, they suck. Oh, they they're, suck. The, they're the worst. I mean, like, especially you know, when you're walking a lot. Well, they suck. They're terrible. But I mean, the Simpsons are the best ones. But then like Labor Day weekend, you got to put them back on. And so then you're like, oh. yeah, you kind of yeah, need, need both. You kind of like, need boot foots and the stocking foots. Okay. 
Well, that's good to know. I guess next year that's going to be on the agenda. Of well, what tell I'm the boys, get. send you a pair of the stocking foot. Yeah, we're kind of running it. up the tabs so far. Like, we well, this is someone, the barb, dude. <laughs> someone, I, like, we got uh, <laughs> Les has got waiters now. And well, like, yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's for the boys, it's for the podcast. That's true. You know, that's true. It's so true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, right. onward. <laughs> let's, let's Dude, I could talk steel, steel head fishing. Oh. I am obsessed, man. You're I, gonna I, go I this winter, you're coming. It. You're going to come like, to Idaho. We'll dude, fish. I, yeah. I am legitimately going to guide for them next year. I have been running my ass off. Well, like, come to Idaho, <laughs> and it's going to blow your mind. You'll I move, need move. to see how someone smart actually does this. You like, instead of, you know, me. me. I'm not smart, but I will, <laughs> you know, here we are. Show me here something. Show me. I'm Spawn right. Sack Bead Guy. <laughs> That's a good guy to be. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to Instagram here. So we threw okay. this out, uh, I think, yesterday or maybe Sunday. Yeah. Um, trying to get some questions. So we did get some questions. So I'm just going to start reading. Like I said, a bunch of these are pretty similar. So you might just – we'll just see how this goes. So the first question, how is the tail situation down there? <laughs> Oh. Great question. They improved from here. <laughs> That's where we start. Yeah. Ice breaker. <laughs> I'm gonna ice broken. You I'm you gonna, can defer if you want because no, it'll come up again. I, I'm gonna say this about Argentina. It it they it's Stay the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your entire life are in well, Argentina. Yeah, because it's I've I believe that it's Hitler's wet dream down there. <laughs> and here's why. And Cody brings up a valid point. Here's why. Because Argentina, of course, there's native Argentinians that are there. But then mm. also, too, it was settled by mostly Europeans. And for the most part, it was Spanish and Italian. And then okay. and Germans. And Germans. Nazis. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. The SS. But yeah. most importantly, Spanish, Italian. So... Then when the all of those sort of forces, you know, this hundreds of years ago, but, you know, sort of mix. I mean, the chicks there are it, it makes you want to puke. That's how science. Good looking they that's are. just science. I yeah, that's know. science. It yeah. It's it's incredible. In, incredible. See. Oh, very good. Spanish. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Hola. He got on the old Rosetta Stone. While Claro, he's down there. Claro, Claro, Claro. OK, so. All right. Man. Next question. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. What, what is the difference in women ratio between oh, Montana geez. and Argentina? <laughs> I love I love the fans, dude. You want to say right now? We've got the best <laughs> listeners. No, no, this on is a three- all these platforms. I want to shout all of you out. You are <laughs> saying everything. Boys. Us three are thinking we love you. We love you. <laughs> and this, I'm gonna I'll, I'll preface this by saying this is a three part question. Oh, oh wow. So that's part one. So I'm going to say on the ratio in women, what was it? How are the women compared to the bull to cow ratio down there, brother? Oh, sure. (laughs) Well, it depends. It depends where you are. Like if you're in Buenos Aires, then like you're, you're doing pretty good. If you're an American, if you are working on a, like a ranch, like then there's, there's not many women around, but overall there's plenty of chicks. So we'll go to the next. All right, part two. Are there pesky mice in Argentina? Pesky mice? This I derails hope, quickly. Okay, so. I, 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 I hope not. <laughs> Question three. Are you still ripping darts? No, but I bought a pack today. Fantastic. <laughs> I, did, I didn't think I you like how you weren't yet. gonna answer that, but then you felt guilted into it. <laughs> no, I, I'll be back on this summer for sure. All right. All right, moving on to the next guy here. Let's hear about this future bride to be he's found. Well, she works he's in the, I think what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I did. She works in the pizza pizza place in San Martin, which was Fantastic. an hour and a half from the ranch that I was guiding on. Her name is Guadalupe. I feel like this is the start of a tenacious D song. (laughs) 
Did you get this <laughs> on pizza? Or was it just love? He got it. It was, it was just, I went there for the pizza and I found love. <laughs> You know, the pizza is it, fantastic. If you're in San Martín de los Andes in, in No Camp Province in Argentina, then you got to go to Pizza Cala. But the Obviously. girls that work there, it's the best looking girls in all the town. They all work at the pizza place. and But there's one that is the best looking, Lada. Uh, but she won't give me the time of the day, you know. Uh, I mean, we follow each other on Instagram, you know, and then we message a little bit in broken yeah. Spanish and English. But yeah. Yeah, she's the one I want for sure. Man. How wow. many times do you think you visited the pizzeria? <laughs> oh, I mean, almost dozens of times. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we had an airport day, I would just, I, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll come with. And then I like drop me off at Pizza Cala and then Joaquin would go get the clients at the airport. Joaquin. <laughs> oh, Guada. <Yeah>. Guada. <laughs> Yeah, All right, really, really moving well. on. Don't worry, we immediately come back. Oh, geez. The next question: Meet any smoking hot Argentinian Argentinian girls? Obviously, yeah, the I yeah. feel like we checked that one. Okay, okay, uh, but at least uh, if you could, if you could go further with it, if she was <laughs> number one, would you say her friends were were number two and three? Who were you, you were gunning for at the pizzeria, or did you? Did you? Yeah, the best the best looking girls in San Martín work at Pizza Cola. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Do uh, they all follow you on Instagram? Pizza Cola, wrap this guy's driftless boat. Good. Dude, I need I need a Pizza Cola. I spent so money at Pizza Cola. I mean, it was just and not like a lot of. I mean, hundreds of dollars, I guess. At Pizza Cola. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which for me, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so Those it's are important, tips, baby. It's important to know that in Argentina, one U.S. dollar equals a thousand Argentine pesos. Oh, oh! So, so you were throwing money. So you were oh, rich. But it, it's balling all, as one says. It's a scale. It's, it's all like relative. relative. So, like when you go to exchange, and this will be a good little side note. So we had this little exchange that we would go to at a supermarket, a grocery store called Super Supermercado Victoria. And they had a little sort of, I should have taken a picture of it, but you walk into the supermarket and there's a little side door that you go in and you can exchange your money. I don't know if it's legal. It's owned by a group of Asian people, but definitely I mean, not legal. The point. Um, but you go in there and if you want to exchange, so if you exchange a hundred dollar bill, roughly the exchange is a hundred thousand pesos for a hundred dollar bill. But the biggest bill they have in Argentina well, you do have two thousand dollar bills, but not down south. Is a thousand dollar peso? So you exchange your hundred dollar bill, and then you get a hundred thousand dollar. Oh my peso. gosh! How do so you just carry that around? Stacks. No, you're just racked up. I yeah, mean, you're, 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 you're. You got the four, George Costanza wallet. You're four p. You, hey, shout out, little baby. You're four pf. Four pockets full. I mean, <laughs> you know that. Four pf. Yeah, you're four pf. I mean, like straight up. But the oh, thing yeah. is, when you go to these exchanges, and this is important for anybody that's going to go to Argentina, your $100 bills have to be perfect. No markings, no tears, nothing wrong with them. If they have even, like you look at our bills that we have now in the US, like of course there's something like, fuck, like someone put like something on it. Like it's, if it's not a perfect $100 bill, it's worth nothing. It's toilet paper there. It has really? to be, I don't know why that, but that's how it is. Even at the banks too. Wow. So you have to have a perfect hundred dollar bill. So you go into this little room and then, you know, she comes out and then you say, okay, you know, the dosian or whatever you're going to exchange. And then they run it through the money counter. So they make sure you get a good deal, but, and then you just have like racks, you feel so rich, but it's not, it's not, I mean, it's a hundred dollars us, you know, but you How much was a slice of pizza? A pizza cola for, for a, a large, a for a large pizza, a pizza call. And if the pizza is, whew, phenomenal so i'm many sure clients. i'm sure it's absolutely trash it's, it's, <laughs> no it's so good it's like i go to argentina for the pizza so. <laughs> seriously because of all the italians that settled there um i think a large pizza is like 10 bucks but it's like good good pizza good pizza <laughs> Very good it's pizza. a good ten dollar pizza. I can just see this boy from Minnesota. Are you sending money back home? Oh no, I just blow it at Pizza Cola. <laughs> Literally, that's what I did. Like I came back here and like 
I could barely fill up my truck with gas because that's <laughs> all it needs to power, so. He's like, God, I was tipping so fat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, because you have all those pesos, you know? I mean, you're just like this. You're like, fum, 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 fum. I mean, whatever. Take them, you know? It's like Monopoly money. <laughs> but, I mean, I still have some it's right here, actually. I mean, this is... I mean, see those stacks. this is this is a rack of Argentine pesos, and this this gets you. I mean, how do I do this? A spread? slice of pizza? Yeah. No, more than that, like, I mean, this is like this gets you not that a whole lot. That gets Guada going yeah. right there. Yeah. So you're walking around four pf, four pockets full, you know. So, all right. Next question. All right. Next. <laughs> Good. All right. Next question. How are the women, and how do they stack up against feed store cowgirls? Hmm. Well, the feed store cowgirls, I have a certain appreciation for, mm -hmm. but a be I guess, I, I mean, I guess better. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, none of, none of them. 1v1 feed store cowgirls. Versus Argentina? Yeah. Oh, Argentina. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you, yeah. you fall in love. Pizza cowgirl texts you. Yeah. Feed store cowgirl texts you and they both say, move here. Let's start a Feed family. store cowgirls not texting you. No, she's not. Let's she's she's yeah. She's got <laughs> got lots and lots of other suitors. <laughs> I ride a horse a lot better. Than um, <laughs> you know, I mean, as a the drift boat is just not nearly as appealing to the girls here. Uh, Argentina all the way. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, and then I don't know if this one is uh, also about women or it could potentially be about fish. So I guess answer okay. however you want. Okay. Uh, this one says, "Are there any native species that you chase down there, and why are there so many non-native species?" <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a very valid question on both fronts. Yeah. So okay. hey, take it however you want. On both fronts, um, to answer the fishing side of it, the only native species I caught in Argentina were what are called percas, which are very similar to like a perch. They look like our perch a little bit. And, uh, but the rest of it, trout, salmon, red stag, uh, those were all introduced. So really from a native standpoint, no, didn't, didn't catch a lot of that. Uh, for the women, same thing. Uh, because most <laughs> Argentina was, was settled by Europeans, Spanish, Italian, French. Right. So, you know, I mean, that's 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 how it is down there. So, I've right. seen plenty of documentaries on like the SS and where is Hitler? Oh, did yeah, he I mean, did he survive? Did dude, you ever I go did. into one of those towns? Yeah, I drove through the village, yeah, yeah, La or something like that, where they built this fortress and it's perfectly situated. It's backed up against a mountain and the front of it looks at the lake. So like you have total coverage and like, they're fairly certain that I don't want to speculate here, but if Hitler escaped Berlin, he may that's have, where he would have been. That's where he would have been because they had total, total, I mean, 360 coverage there. And that's where all the boys went. Not, not to call the SS boys, but his boys. No boys. You heard it here first. No, no, no. You no. heard it here first. Will but is like, a Nazi. And when you roll through that town, <laughs> don't. No, no, I'm not. Book a trip with him today. <laughs> not good for my. No, the are like, filling up fast, boys. <laughs> but the, when you roll the nerd through, in me is like oh, very interested. When that you is... roll through that village, it's there's a lot of heavy German influence, so. Yeah, I mean, if he lived, if he didn't actually kill himself, then for sure he died in Argentina, which I don't blame him. Beautiful. That's crazy. Damn. That's crazy. Dang. All right. Next. Next question. What feels more natural, king salmon in the Great Lakes or in Patagonia? That's a that's a that's actually a really good question, and that kind of brings up sort of what we were talking about with Cody. But I would say, what feels honestly, more natural? Honestly, because I fished for salmon in the Great Lakes too. I would say Patagonia only because the rivers that we were fishing for kings are glacial. So they look very similar to the rivers mm. that I fish in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So like in that perspective, it's similar. But at the same time, those fish were planted there, same as they were in the Great Lakes. So there's no difference in that, you know, but like as a feel thing, probably Patagonia. I could see that. I saw a video. I don't know. It must be because I 
follow you, but there's some guy doing the spay fishing. Yeah. And it looked like it was 150 miles an hour wind. Out there. Yeah. That's, that's interior. Of Fuego. Yeah. Which that's just ripping his rod. I'm like, Dude, that's like the windiest place. on. Earth. Yeah. That's like, yeah, no, no trees, nothing. Yeah. It looked terrible actually. Yeah. Not fun. No. I, yeah. All right. There's only one more. So we'll just, we'll bring it home with one more. Uh, okay. How is the lady situation? <laughs> the listeners just want to know, dude. Like, yeah, I think they're the planning trip. Trip. Really past the pizzeria. Did you meet anyone yes. outside? We've been so pizzeria? focused. Outside of Pizza Cala. Um, yeah. When I was in, when I was in Buenos Aires, yeah, I met a few there. The key with the Buenos Aires girls is to sort of like slow roll what you actually do because if, if they see you're American and you speak English, they sort of think you have a lot of money. I don't. I have none. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, this is about $30 US here. Um, the key with that is sort of like kind of act like you're some sort of big shot. But yeah, I mean, overall, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, you were doing great, dude. Just keep going. I can't, I can't remember what the question it was, was. It was just... How is the lady situation? Oh, yeah. I mean, good overall. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. But you have to be, like, careful about what you say you do for work, depending on what province you're in. Like, in Noken, they don't care. But in Buenos Aires, for sure, like you say, oh, I'm, you know, guy de pesca, which is a fishing guide, and that's okay. But if you say guy de caso, then that you're a hunting guide, then they say, oh, we're, we're talking about the they don't like that. Like that. <laughs> they don't like that. No. You have to be yeah. somewhat strategic in your approach. Or say I'm, you know, so a tourista, which I'm a tourist, and then they, <laughs> you know, like that. and that's that that might be even better sometimes. But that's good well action. Done. Yeah, <laughs> and thank you to the fans that submitted those questions. Yeah, yeah to the that board. was fantastic. Further, yeah, please we'll, keep we'll them have coming. to do that more, and uh, we'll we'll get some good responses. Like I said, I people were just charged up, dude. I mean, I yeah. they want to know about the they want to know. Them. Yeah. What are you going to do, you know? Right. So I guess let's just go around. I mean, I, I'm sure we all got some questions that we want to ask. And then I guess if you if you just want to go off on tangents, just do it. I mean, we want to hear yeah. some stories too. So sure. let's just let it rip. So let's Sam, you got any table. questions yeah. right out the gate? Yeah. Uh, let's let's just do a good old-fashioned kind of almost like a hopes, fears, and dreams. Going into your experience down there, what were your hopes? What were your fears? What were your dreams? And then what actually happened? And then – before you answer that, why don't you just give up? Cause I don't know if everybody totally knows like what you did or like, sure. That, just give yeah, us like an exactly overview right. and then go into that. Yeah. yeah. So I was down there from basically the beginning of February until now. So about a little over two months I was there. So when I first got there, I met up with my business partner, Joaquin, who I met in Alaska this past summer, but so then for like the first two weeks I was in Argentina, we just like fished for fun. So we went way down south, fished for the king salmon. Then we went farther north, fished for trout, whatever. And then after that, then I was at the Red Stag operation for five weeks, roughly, um, guiding the Red Stag hunts. So then after that was done, then I went and fished for fun at a different spot and then went to Buenos Aires. But... Um, my hopes when I went down there was I just wanted my, honestly, my biggest concern was just the travel, like for everything to go smoothly because I had like a lot of flights, you know, flying out of Montana, out of Helena, especially I was Helena to Denver, Denver to Houston, Houston to Buenos Aires. And then, you know, there for a night, then fly from BA to Calafate or wherever. So the travel for me, like was the biggest, like worry, I guess. And then I knew when I got, with Joaquin, like I would be good because he, he grew up down there. I mean, he was born and raised in Argentina. So like once I got with him, you know, then like everything was totally good. But for me, the travel was like the biggest worry. And then what was the second part of it? So fears, like what were your biggest fears going down there right away? And biggest what, actually fears. What? I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't like super, super worried about like, cause it's not really a dangerous country. It's not like, like Venezuela or like El Salvador or anything like that, where it's like, you know, really dangerous. But like the first, when I, I the first day I got there, I was in Buenos Aires and I spent the night there and like, you know, walking around, like 
people, cause I don't like get out too much, you know, like I don't spend a lot of time in like big cities. So like, you know, you're out there and like people approach you and like all that stuff, you know? So, I mean, that was like not a shell shock, but like, I guess a lot like, of action for an action. Yeah, exactly. You know? And then of course everybody speaks Spanish down there, you know? So like there's a language barrier. So I was a little worried about that, but I mean, as I got to the end of the trip, I mean, my Spanish improved dramatically. Um, but then like dream wise, I mean, the fishing was awesome, of course, but then the red stag hunting was like everything that I could imagine. And, and then some, I mean, the, the hunting was just phenomenal. I mean, it's just like, awesome. like elk hunting on steroids, you know, like they're so aggressive, like they fight constantly. The roar is so cool. Like all of that was like, I had seen pictures and videos, but until you're like there, you know, I mean, like mm -hmm. once you're in it, we used to call it like going into like the lion's den. Cause it's so loud when they're like, when it's peaking, you know, and they're roaring so much. Um, it was, yeah, it was like everything I could have imagined and, and done some. So that's awesome. Yeah. Some of those videos you sent were just insane, dude. Just the sound of like it's that. So going down. loud. It's incredibly loud. Like the, they're like, you know, like, you know, when you're like elk hunting, like you hear a bugle and you're like, and not here for sure. Like you hear a bugle, you're like, oh, we got to chase that. You know, I mean, there, it's just like, you're droned out in roars. Like it's, it's, it's not out of the ordinary. When you know, is, when is the peak from rut for red stag? What's that? When is the peak rut for red stag? March 15th to the 25th is sort of like the peak at 10 days, I would say. Cause like where we're hunting, the ranch that we're hunting is like, it's a really nice sets out like Valley and it's surrounded by three different mountain ranges. So all the stag pour in there because the cat, well, hinds is what they call them there instead of cows, but like hinds, the females, they live on the ranch year round. And so all the stag will pour out. They come down there for four weeks, rut their faces off and then they leave. But like, yeah, March 15th to the 25th, is just like bonkers, you know, like you're they're everywhere, you know? And then one last question, then I'll bring it on to Ryan. Just a super generic question. Yeah. What was the overall weather like down there in Argentina from the time you were there? To time yeah. like I would say very similar to like the, like Montana or Colorado in the fall, because when I got there in February, that would be like August in the States. Okay. And then coming into March would be like September. So the lows were in the mid forties, I would say highs were in the mid sixties, you know, so sort of that nice. kind of that kind of weather pattern and then like some it rained a little bit that kind of thing but very similar to like the sort of rocky mountain you know west um in the fall september coming comfortable into hunting weather though oh so comfortable and you only hunt the mornings and the evenings which is nice i mean because during the day they all bed down just like elk do or you know deer nice all right ryan so i guess i got several questions but i guess first one so I mean, I know this was like your first time ever experiencing like stag hunting for sure. Yeah. But um, like it looked like you guys were pretty successful. Like, I guess I don't know like how many hunters you had versus how many kills yeah. you guys had or whatever. But the way that it set up, I mean, was did you think like the like hunting the terrain where this this like lodge was? I mean, was it like a pretty dialed spot for like this rut to, to happen yeah. and everything? Yeah. It's the perfect spot because where the lodge sits, like it's in this valley and then like <clears throat> all the stag come out of these, there's three different mountain ranges. So they all come down and like the hunting itself, it's, it's not, it's not challenging from a physical standpoint. Like it's very easy because you're hunting the valley floor, you know? So the only challenging part is finding one because they manage it. The management there is like very strict to shoot like an older stag. You know, you're looking for like an mm -hmm. eight, nine, 10 year old. So you see like lots of stag that are five, six years old that have, you know, 16 points, 18 points, like these beautiful racks, but they're mm -hmm. young, you know? So like the challenging part is finding one that's old enough that you want to kill, you know? And, and the old ones sometimes don't have like as big a racks as like a six year old, you know, like they're it's sort of like if you shot a three and a half year old whitetail versus a six and a half year old whitetail, you know, it's just different, heavier, you know, it might not have as many points, all that. Um, but like 
overall, it's just loaded with yeah. stuff. I mean, I mean that one, it looked like you guys killed one just old bastard. I mean, I don't know what the body size on that thing was. I think, but I, it, I, think I sent you that. That was yeah. the oldest one we killed, and I, we figure that was probably 11 years old. But the craziest wow. stag we saw the whole season, and he was my favorite. And so there, like, you can shoot your trophy, you know, when you pay the price, you get your trophy. And then you can shoot a management stag, too, for an additional fee. So a management stag would be like – uh older stag that's only 10 points you know like a five by five no crowns on the top he's never going to get bigger you know or like one that's got like a wonky side like we had like a club bull you know like one that had a club and a full side or like a big giant spike there was one of those but the coolest one he had nothing no horns just knobs like super heavy knobs and he had the biggest body i've had ever seen on a stag when he, when he ran through the there's a big main field where they all run around and they chase chase hinds and they fight each other when he came through there all the other stag and he had no horns just knobs they all parted ways it was like moses spreading the red sea when he came really? through, he had a gimp too like he was <laughs> fucked up of like, course. and his body was huge he had the biggest neck like he was just enormous and like he was the coolest stag that I saw all season. He had no horns. You know, I mean, he just had like these like bulbs on his head. But Joaquin uh, figured he was probably like 14 or 15 years old. Damn. Like, like this was it for him. But when he rolled through, it was amazing. Like you'd see all these, they'd be fighting all day, you know, and they'd be chasing. And then when he showed up, it was just like, get out the way. Like. The big dog is rolling through. And he had, he had nothing. He had nothing to fight with. He didn't fight anybody. They all just moved, you know. Like, it's crazy how they have, like, that hierarchy, you know. Damn. He was he was a bad – and we never killed him. Uh, I bet he dies this winter for sure. But he was hmm. cool. He was cool. He looked like a gremlin. <laughs> just a big so, gremlin. Yeah. So when you got down there, like, how, did, how does uh... – I mean, obviously you, you get in, how soon did you get hunters in, um, versus like, did you have time to kind of like glass around and kind of like get to see a bunch of stags before you were like game on hunting sure. or was it kind of like learning on the go? Cause I mean, obviously you've had some like elk hunting experience and yeah. stuff like that, but it's, a, it's a different game, obviously. So we got there, we got to the ranch on the 27th of February and we went out that evening and, and glassed and we didn't see a single stag. So, not a single one. <laughs> just, just hinds. Like, there's tons and tons of hinds out there, the cows. They're everywhere, but we never saw a single stag. And our hunters came the next day. That's and brutal. Shit. I'm like, this is not good. Um, and then they showed up that day. They didn't hunt that day, but the next day. But then every day after that, at the beginning, it just, like, amplified. Like, And then all of a sudden, you hit a point where it was, like, March 20th, like you reach like the carrying capacity because there's so many, you know, so, but, but initially, yeah, there was, there was nothing there because they, the stag do not live there year round, only the hinds do. So like they all come down from the mountains, come in, do the thing. And then they leave, they bail out of there. They don't stay there. So, hmm. so was it, it was, was it mainly like a glassing game till you found a bully that you wanted to yeah. shoot? Or yeah. were you like actively like doing stocks all the time? Yeah. So the only time that I did like where you're actively like hunting, hunting like all day is if you had an archery hunter, mm -hmm. because then you could, you could shoot one that like maybe wasn't quite as super, super old. Cause I mean, it's archery. So like, you know, you, it's, it's not hard to get like close to them, but it's hard to get within archery range. If that makes sense. Because they're, they're always surrounded by like 25 hinds. Like they keep this harem around them. Like it's their security task force, you know? And so otherwise like normal rifle hunter, you would glass in the mornings, you'd figure out where you would locate a couple target stag. And then in the evenings they'd be in the same spot. So you could hunt them. You get set up, you know, before they'd get up from their beds and, and then, and then, you know, hunt them. But I mean, when we did the archery hunts, I got two archery hunters and it was like, then you're just like chasing the roar, which is awesome. But like, you don't know sometimes like the roar, like it sounds like it's a 10 year old, but you roll up on it and all of a sudden it's like six year old stag, you can't shoot it, you know? So hmm. like, 
getting in in amongst them though is is pretty badass because you're like fucking surrounded, you know. God, it sounds like such a badass experience. Like I've seen videos, and like obviously I saw the one stuff you sent me, yeah. which was just incredible. I mean, just like being there during like the like it seems like a very aggressive rut like behavior, oh, it's you know, so, versus like so aggressive, even where they're like in elk. a smaller confined area. Where there's like so many animals. That's the thing is that this Valley is not very big and mm -hmm. they all pour out of there. So it's like, it's like tight quarters. So they're constantly fighting. They're roaring all the time and they're like competing constantly. So they're pushing around like one, you'll see one one day that has like 30 hinds. And then the next day, someone came in and kicked his ass and kicked him out. And there'll be another like sort of like herd bull with him, but it's just like rotating like just twice a day sometimes. Yeah. Constant challenge. Yeah. Are you calling yeah. at them? Like, are, are, are you, are you making roar calls? Are you rattling or doing um, anything or raking bushes or raking trees? Like not there, like in some of the other places in Argentina, you can do it. Um, but there they have, there's so many animals that like, even you will like, roar at them to stop them like i did that a couple times to stop for the shot you know sort of like you would like uh like a deer you know yeah. you know like that yeah. but there they won't respond to any calls because they've already got like 30 bitches with them you know like yeah they got, they got no reason to like come to one more. they own the pizzeria yeah they're like the owners <laughs> of pizza cola like they they have it figured out like they're yeah. they don't care you know and like even a competing stag like They'll, like the big ones will just like kick their ass and then like you know whatever like on to the next one so yeah Damn. wow so i guess I, one more and then i'll let I, I don't know i'm sure cody's got some too and we'll keep going but so i like this type of i know like a red stag hunt is probably on a lot of people's like hit list for sure. just like light you know once in a lifetime type of hunts mm -hmm. like where you were at this outfitter well anywhere that you can hunt them like whether yeah. it's in in uh you know new zealand or yeah. or in argentina or places in the uk that do it it's like this is like an, an expensive hunt for someone to just like buy to like come sure. and go do it. yeah yeah it's not it's not a cheap hunt so we're like i gotta figure like a lot of the people that you hunted with over the course of like that time were pretty like you know high rollers or whatever people that definitely like had some coin to throw down yeah like was did you have any clients that were in some like some pretty badass line of work or like anything that was like yeah, what were some of their stories of what they yeah. do you know a lot of them were in some sort of form of construction that was right. where a lot of the money came from yeah right. you know, like had Makes some sense. Guy, had one guy that was like a remodel guy but did it on such a high you know volume scale that he was like extremely extremely wealthy you know another guy that was like a concrete guy but same thing you know scaled it up where he, you know he didn't have to do anything and where um, are a lot of these guys coming from are these guys from texas are they from iowa are they from we had we had a we had a big mix you know we had guys we had a couple first week the guys were from florida second week those guys were from ohio third week those guys were uh from montana uh that was so like all us jason math all 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 gringos yeah yeah all, all, yeah. all well yeah and i i that i mean having matt's in your camp had to have been cool i mean like was very, that was that was really cool uh him and willie both were awesome dudes and like obviously, did you know that they were gonna hunt with you before you went down there um yeah i kind of knew but i i had met jason maybe once um, like a couple years ago, I didn't like know the guys at all, but they were really cool. Great guys to have in camp, you know, um, and cool to hunt with them. Cause they were like, obviously like pretty, you know, well-rounded hunters. So like, I learned a lot from them too, just being around them, you know, when so I'm that, sure they were like shooting a movie. So, yeah. Yeah. So that'll, <laughs> when that comes, when that comes out, that'll be, that'll be cool. But yeah, I mean, the clientele wise, you know, I'm not going to like name prices, but the cost of the red stag hunt is like very comparable to the cost of a really good elk hunt in the U S like it's not that far fetched. Well, you know? Yeah. For an outfitted hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for exactly. Yeah. Not like a DIY, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. But like, you know, see, so we had a mix of like guys that had like a ton, a ton of money and then guys that were like doing well, you know, if that makes, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so it was like, a mix of that but i will say this about where we were hunting you know because so when we got done hunting we had you know 15 uh heads and 
and antlers to transport, you know, because we euroed them all there and we prepared all the hides and stuff. And then we had to drive from uh, San Martin, you know, Ken Province to Buenos Aires, which is a 20 hour drive and bring them to the export. Oh, wow. Jeez. That drive wow. alone, I mean, driving in Argentina is like a, a completely different like there no rules apply basically like the speed limits are posted but like it doesn't matter the cops don't pull you over there right so and like so you can pass on like double yellow like you can do whatever you want but then they have like checkpoints set up like where they and and then when you get to the checkpoint they can do whatever you want they can search your truck they can do whatever um and so of course every checkpoint that we went through when you have eight stag on the roof of a Toyota Hilux and then seven more in the bed, you obviously get checked, you know? And, um, so, you know, you go through there and you show them all the paperwork, you're good to go. But then when we got to the exporter in, in Buenos Aires, which this is a good story too. So Joaquin was telling me like, we're getting close to BA like after two days of travel. And he's like, okay. He's like, when we get here, like, it's not a great neighborhood. Like, Buenos Aires is a huge city, you know, 15 million people. He's like, what we do, because he's done this for 30 years, we pull up on the sidewalk, okay? You're going to jump out, and you're going to start, un, you know, untying all the stag on the roof. He goes, we're not going to say anything to each other. We're not going to do anything. Untie them all, and you're going to start handing them to me, okay? I said, okay, okay, okay. Ready to go. So, like, you, like, roll into this, like, you know, like, south side Buenos Aires neighborhood, and that's exactly what happened. Pull up on the sidewalk. I jump out. I start taking my, you know, cutting all the ropes, you know, I'm like handing them off, handing them off. Handing them off. So then we get them all into the exporter because this is like his secondary transport spot. And then he has a bigger warehouse. And so like walking around, like in that, in that warehouse, like looking at our stag compared to like, except for the high fence places in Argentina where they shoot like these giant, like New Zealand looking, you know, stag. I mean, for sure, ours were the best on average for a free range hunt. You know, like if you want to shoot like one that has 50 points, then go to New Zealand or go to, you know, high fence Argentina. But that was cool to see that. It's like, OK, this is this is legitimate, you know, for a free range, you know. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> mm. that's awesome. All right, Hunter, any any questions? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, as far as a salmon, is like a king salmon a king salmon, or is the fishing quite different down in Argentina compared to what you've experienced in Alaska? Sure. I would say totally the same. I think it like aligns perfectly with Alaska, especially the river we were fishing. It's like glacial. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, That's it what looks, you're saying. looks a lot like, yeah, it looks a lot like Kenai. Um, and they eat the same things, you know, big, big spinners or like a big mm -hmm. sort of like plug maglet thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very, very similar. And of course, like those guys that fish down there, like the locals anyways, like it's so raw, like that King salmon fishery is so undeveloped yet that like mm -hmm. a lot of those guys just throw like a big giant, like whatever the fuck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and they catch them for sure. But like, yeah there's i mean i think you could catch them there on like a float and a big bead like I yeah think you could get them really good on that like all that stuff it's just so undeveloped like which is is very cool because i was talking to someone about this earlier today like every salmon or steelhead fishery i've ever been to is like always been like i've been late to the party you know everyone's yeah. like, oh you should have as hell yeah and like if people say that too to us now about like walleyes or bass like you should have right. seen it 30 years ago yeah. yeah. So it was cool to go down there and be like, I feel like I'm on the cusp of this, like breaking out. Like, I think right. it's going to explode in the next five years. Like, I think there's yeah, and you, people down there. But like, I think if you, if a guy gets in on it in the next five years, like there's a picture I'll send it to you guys right now. of One that was caught a couple of years ago that I'm fairly certain would have been the world record. Like, I think it's a legitimate really? like, upper 90 pound king. Got Have you seen that boat. one that's going around on Instagram right now from there? Yeah. So those guys that Trace Amigos, the guys that caught that, that's the same river system that I was fishing. That thing is insane big, dude. So I'll send you guys this right now. And I don't know if we can like, like patch it in, but like, I think honestly, like as far as like a King salmon fishery goes like Alaska. And I hate to say this cause I love Alaska. Like I think is pretty much shot. Something is going on up there. Like where the fish aren't coming back. They're not as big. Like it's all messed up. 
and like in Argentina, they're doing great. So something's going on down there. Those yeah. fish are like the like ocean the commercial street. fishing or something. Is... Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Alaska, that has a lot to wow. do with it. And like in Argentina, like there's none of that. So like, I mean this fish, yeah, that is, I think that's a legitimate 90 something pounder. I mean, it's really, big. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy. yeah. People Absolutely. Watch we'll, we'll throw that up on, on Instagram. Yeah. See what people think of that. Oh my God. It doesn't even look wow. real. Right. Like those are a couple of gauchos that caught that. Like, you know, they don't like. Yeah. They, they, they honor, probably honor, caught you, it on a piece of grass. For have sure. you seen that video that's going around right now or no? I'll send no, it to you. no. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. How did they land? That thing is giant. And it was in a river. Dude, they probably used that yeah, same that rope. A... Yeah. 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 No like, doubt. So I think like legitimately, like I'll say this about Argentina king fishing. Like you're, you're not going to catch like a bunch of them. You know, but I do think you have probably the best chance to catch potentially the world record is there. Like, I think it's going to happen in the next five years. Um, but you might go down there for a week and only catch one, but it might be 75 pounds. That big? You know? Yeah. yeah. yeah I insane. would be down for that. That looks like a whale, dude. Well, we should do it. It's a, trip. a baby fucking whale. We could we do a trip. I we would. Trip. I, PTB, I, uh, I would yeah. be all in. We'll talk. We'll talk once we're off air because it's okay. legitimately doable. I think we could okay. make not, it happen. Not a crazy amount of money either. I yeah. would. I would gladly do I that. I think we could do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Salmon by day, pizza by night. Are you kidding me? <laughs> What I'm saying, we'd, be, uh, we'd be in the pizza place, dude. You know, <laughs> you guys would like pizza cola. <laughs> the pizza's good, but. <laughs> the <rest> the <laughs> really he's really there for that mm -hmm. uh, so what what was like i guess out of all the clients you had what i mean i don't know did, did you have separate clients that you were fishing with or were you fishing with the same ones that you were hunting with um so so i should preface this fishing in argentina um at least in no ken province and rio negro province no gringos can guide those fishing trips you have to have two years of residency in Argentina to be a fishing guide there. Okay. So hmm. just want to, you know, get, get, get that out of the way. But, um, as far as the hunting clients went two, I think two or three of the groups were people that I had fished with in Alaska prior. So that part was really cool. nice. Very I cool. at least had, you know, knew them and like all that. Um, but, um, so that was cool to be able to like reconnect with people. Alaska but uh yeah I think like um what was the question Ryan <laughs> oh well I I I didn't really even get to the question I was just kind of asking if you were hunting with any fishing with the same people I was just like out of all the clients because I, sure. I mean you just said you've you've been with a couple of them before like were there any that you were like I don't know that were like really good to, to either hunt with or whatever. Like awesome awesome yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, like I said, all, well, I guess I didn't say this, but out of all the groups we had, everybody was really good except for one week. We had one week of kind of like, a, kind of a nightmare crew, but the rest of them were awesome. And like, especially the nice part was our last group of this, of the season was uh, a guy, Ron is his name. And he's like such a beauty. I fished with them in Alaska and like, the nicest guy from Minnesota. Wow. Oh, yeah. Nice. From Minnesota, like a, just a beauty of a guy, like was a teacher, like retired now. And like, and he brought his son-in-law and then one of his buddies. And like, we had just an awesome week of hunting and like the nicest guys, like so appreciative. Like it was such an awesome way to sort of like put a bow on top of the whole season. Cause we had like obviously a great season, but it's nice to end it with people that are like, so yeah, appreciative. Sure. and I think you guys would agree. Like people from the Midwest, like, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, like they're good just people. like good. They're good. They're good people for sure. Like and, yeah. and and Iowa too, you know. I guess, but like <laughs> and <laughs> Iowa too. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but like you know, they're just like good. They're like good yeah, down to earth. Yeah, like yeah. good people. Like very appreciative of like. I don't want to name names, but like we had some groups where like this place we're hunting is like looks like National Geographic. I mean, it's like absolutely stunningly beautiful like and you know you get some of the people that like have zero appreciation for that yeah not it's annoying people, a few people but like i mean every day i would wake up and like walk outside and just be like 
like remind myself like sort of where I'm at, you know, like mm -hmm. this is amazing. And like those guys, those Minnesota guys the last week, I mean, they like totally, totally got it. And most of the other clients did too, but like that was pretty cool to share that with them. That's for sure. My favorite part about guiding is you get to share like these sort of marquee moments, like once in a lifetime, you know, kind of experiences with people mm -hmm. that maybe you, you might not see them again, you know, but like, it's pretty, pretty awesome, you know, to be a part of that. Like they might not remember your name, but they'll remember like the high fives, you know, and like pictures, oh, like all that stuff I think is, 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 is pretty cool to be a part of, you know? Do you think you'll, uh, I mean, obviously you were there and like a part of like all these haunts and stuff yeah. like that. Do you think you'll ever, uh, you know, go down to do like a hunt up, like of your own to go and like shoot a stag or do that or maybe even go somewhere else to do it yeah i would i would love to like do something on my own down there especially um i would love to hunt um they have a lot of russian boar there oh, oh um, that'd be sweet so speaking of the russian boar this is, oh this will be a quick one but so there's we killed one one night and we we're out on the main field and we're like quartering it out you know and like all of a sudden like i'm I hear like a like a noise kind of like rustling you know and there's stag all around you like it's pitch black so i'm like oh it's just another deer you know and like my client like shines the light on it and i'm like looking at it, i'm like god that thing seems kind of squatty you know and it's this sow boar that smelled the carcass because they have such good noses and she's circling us and like getting like closer and closer and cl and then you can start <laughs> hearing her she's like you know like a pig does i guess I'm like fuck. i'm like i don't know if we're gonna have to, i didn't know what to do you know i'm like i don't know if you shoot this thing you know i'm like what are we gonna do but we got it done and got out of there and then as we're driving out of the field like there's a crew of like 25 of them and like the males the russian boars are huge i mean they're like 400 pounds you know big wow big. like that big yeah, razorbacks. They're they're <laughs> huge. Not like the feral yeah. hogs like in Texas. I mean, these things are like they're they're serious business down there. So I'd love to shoot one of those. I mean, of course I'd love to shoot a stag, but like I'm you know, it's a spendy deal. Like, you know, I'm probably maybe. I mean, someday I probably will shoot one, but like Russian like, boars probably be good eating too. I uh, yeah, I guess like especially if you kill like a you know, a younger one for sure, like a little you know <laughs> yeah 400 <laughs> pounder probably not pounder. the greatest yeah but. i mean and there was there was a few little squealers with them you know yeah. so you know those would be tasty but i mean as far as argentina goes it's an outdoorsman's paradise and then too like i got to do some bird hunting when i was down there as well and like that is just like out of hand what like, kind of birds so i mean if you want to kill like a lot you go and do doves and um pigeon like and then you can shoot like legitimately like a thousand rounds a day like if wow. you want to and you have what's called you have what's called uh you have your your bird boy next to you or your gun <laughs> come on so you shoot three times boom 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 you know okay great you got them all he hands you a new gun with three shots boom 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 meanwhile while you're shooting he's reloading you and i mean you can shoot as many rounds as you want um like it's <laughs> Out of hand. What? Got the bird boy just is he yeah. is he yeah. Jewish? Is that bird boy Jewish? Uh no, you, you definitely don't <laughs> <He's laughs> <Chicago. laughs> definitely. <laughs> but like, I mean, so you can do that. But what I really liked is wow. we got to hunt over dogs for a couple days, and they have these things called uh martinetas and perdis, which are like flushing, very similar to like a grouse, you know. And so the dogs get on point, you know, you hunt them like we do in the Midwest. And so like, I really dug that. I thought that was super cool, you know, but like if a guy wants to shoot a lot, man, you can go down there and ducks too. I mean, you can do the same thing with ducks after May 1st. It's just a slaughter. So. Wow. Hmm. Sounds awesome. Damn. Yeah. There's just like so much opportunity there. Like even awesome. for fishing too, there's like so much stuff. Oh man. I mean, if you're a fly fisherman, it, it's the best trout fishing I've ever seen anywhere in my entire life. Like, there's no doubt about it. And, like, I remember thinking this, too. Like, why would why would you go travel somewhere to fish for species that you could catch here? You know, like, especially in Montana, you know? Yeah. Once I went and did it, like, I went to a lodge for three days when I was down there. And the fishing is so good. I'm like, okay, like, this totally makes sense. Like, yeah. it's, like, yeah. so much better. And then, of course, you have the king salmon 
you've got Steelhead down there too in that same system. And then you've got great golden Dorado fishing in the north half. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's just crazy. Sick. Yeah, it's... Question for you. So just b besides the pizzeria, what about the cuisine down there? Did you, like, whether it be street food, mm -hmm. restaurants, or at the lodge, like, what, what was just, like, some mm -hmm. cuisine that stood out to you? It's it's beef heavy. It's very heavy on beef. They're a huge beef producer. So, like, the steak down there I am being is excellent. Very, like, super good steak. And then you eat a lot of potatoes, you know, which we can all get behind for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then my favorite is empanadas. Have you guys had empanadas before? It's like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like the empanadas are like super, super good. Um, but yeah. Heavy beef, like heavy, heavy on the beef and it's, and it's good beef, like really good beef. So nice. yeah. So, good food. But the wine, the wine is out of hand. Really? 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 Huh. The vino? Argentina. Vino? Bro, <laughs> the vino? <laughs> the vino. Vino? They are a Unreal. huge, huge producer in Mendoza province. They are a huge, huge grape producer. So like the wine down there is cheap and it's, and also too, I went down there with like having no kind of like established wine palette, you know, <laughs> but like it's, it's good and it's cheap and it, and, uh, it's everywhere. You know, you always have vino with dinner, you know, and then after as well. And then the national drink of Argentina liquor wise is called Fernet. You guys ever heard of Fernet before? I haven't. No, you have Cody. I've heard of it. I don't know yeah. what it is. It's so so it's it's actually Italian. Fernet is Fernet Branca, and it's a a, a bitter. I actually had to pull it up because I didn't know what, but I drank so much of it. A bitter, aromatic spirit, uh, herbs and spice. It's sort of like a very heavily spiced rum, I guess. Oh. Like I would compare it to, and you. It's always with Coke. So Fernet and Coke always. Yeah. And. Uh, it, yeah, that's a that's a tasty tasty beverage, and then non-alcohol they drink what's called mate, which I got super addicted to. So I'm going to show you guys here. You this, got the cup, didn't you? So this is this is a mate. This is designed for mate. This bag, so I can carry <laughs> all I need for mate. So it's like a tea, basically. And so in this bag, I have. He's really fucking steelhead now, dude. So oh, yeah. I have my, I got my, I've got my Stanley for thermos. So you'd fill this with hot water, right? And then here I've got my matacito, which this is where you put the mate in this little sort of thing here. <laughs> and then you drink Tell it. Tell me you have the straw. So you yes. drink it with yeah, bombisha. See? <laughs> <laughs> see? So then you put your mate in here, which you put in this little you know vacío here this has the mate in it wow. okay and it's it, it's like tea basically i mean it's like a herbal blend so you you pour it in there and there's a way that you have to like make it but then you pour the hot water over the top of it and then you drink it out of the straw like that and it's it's got so much caffeine in it you guys i mean <laughs> no, it's out of this world i like, think we need to get on this you yeah. guys do. It's awesome. It's it looks like you came from the Shire with that pack. <laughs> <It does. laughs> like that's how it. I mean, oh, so you want to be a stag guide, huh? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, what do you know about mate? <laughs> so, like, that's how it. Interview like, question one. <laughs> like, and everybody in Argentina, you see them walking around. They all have these bags. Really? Not, not identical, but they all have thermoses. And then like at the gas stations, there's little dispensers with hot water, like 25 cents, fill up your Stanley thermos with hot water so you can make your mate, you know, like it's, <laughs> wow. it's, wait till uh, they get banged, dude. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Bang, C4, Red Bulls, Monster. Has on mate. You boys get on the mate and you'll like never get off of it. Skolsky's it's like, you got the white gummy bear one or? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, dude, it's so good. Cody, you would love it because you're oh, yeah. team, like Definitely. Like, I started drinking it and I was like, this shit. I'm like, this is like a this white slaps. lightning. I'm like, this is like a white lightning times a million. Is there like oh, a crash? Lightning. Is there a crash? No, because you just drink it all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crash. You just like keep you like keep it going. We just keep yeah. going. 
Yeah. And like the big thing there is like when you make mate, like because ever mate, you share it with who's ever around you, you know, like everybody like drinks the mate, but like, dude, it's it's so good. Like, I mean, I ordered from Amazon before I even got home. I got two bags of fucking Plagedito, which is this is this is your mate. Like, so it was waiting oh, for me when I got God. home. Unreal. Yeah, yeah, it's it's legitimate. All right, so. we'll we'll have to give this a shot. We'll we'll have to we'll have to get on the on on the bandwagon here. Yeah, get on the mate train. Yeah, you guys just come out and visit me, and we'll drink mate together. It'd be awesome. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. Mate gang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Mate gang. Gang 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 gang. <laughs> That's interesting, dude. That's yeah. awesome. oh my god, dude. I I just feel like like when you come back from a trip like that because you're like fresh off of it like you're mm-hmm. still just like like there's the highlights and everything but like a month from now is when you're just like thinking about shit that you're just like oh my god dude oh like that did sure. that was a thing yeah it'll it, like it has it certainly hasn't like set in yet like because i'm pretty fresh off of it but like i'm already thinking about like next year like and i'm super pumped because like next year all of our hunts this season were like at the lodge, but we're going to try to add a couple that are like horseback hunts, like in the mountains, you know, like nice. up high. Like, I mean, it's just like the place is just awesome. My what biggest concern is like, go ahead, Zoby. No, 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 you go ahead. I said my biggest concern is just like getting better at my Spanish because like that's critical down there. So, mm-hmm. what are you going to miss the most before you go back next? If what I'm going to miss the most about Argentina? Yeah. Or the guiding or just anything. Yeah, probably, honestly, what I'm going to miss the most is the siestas. So, yeah, yeah, Yeah. because they're built, it's built into the Argentine culture that like you don't eat dinner until like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. Right. So here's how a normal like day goes, like in Argentine, like, or even when we were guiding, we'll just use this as an example. Wake up 6.30, go have coffee, no breakfast. Hunt until 10, 10.30. Go back, then you have breakfast, and then you just have a light breakfast, like toast or like uh, scones, you know, jam, butter, whatever. Then after your first after breakfast, go take a nap, your first siesta of the day, like a two-hour nap. Then you have lunch at 2 p.m., like a big lunch, usually like steak, potatoes, all that, have your lunch. Then you take your second siesta and then you go hunt at four o'clock. Hell yeah. But like it's, it's built, it's built in there because like even the businesses, like if you want to go shop somewhere, they're open from 9 AM to 1 PM. And then they close until 5 PM. Interesting. And then they'll Hmm. open until 9 30. So like the siesta it's like a critical part of like Argentine and probably maybe more of South America. I don't know, but like in Argentina, like everybody takes a siesta. And so that way you can make it to that sort of late dinner, you know? Yeah. Like it's just, it's so different than the States. Like we're so used to like being like, and then when you go out down there or like in Buenos Aires, especially like the bars are open until like five, six in the morning. You know, and like we're not really built for that. You know, like we're used to being yeah. bombed at midnight and then going home at two. You know, like you got to pace yourself way out. You know, like <laughs> make it till four a.m. It's a hard thing to do. You know, but like they're like, yeah, it's just like totally different because you're gonna get a nap during the day, like no matter what. So I'll miss the siestas the most. Sure. Will's gonna go back to guiding in Montana. They'll be like halfway through the morning and be like, "All right, boys, we'll." He'll be talking yeah. again. Yeah. Going over streets. Like, hold, yeah. up, hold up, I have an idea. I know this was a half day trip, but yeah, like I need to, like when they guide down there, like the trout trips, like they'll fish all day. Like they'll fish from like nine a.m. to like seven p.m. But middle of the day, they're setting up the hammocks for the clients and, and they're siesting. That's like, hilarious. Yeah, like it's siesta time, like no doubt. I was talking with Joaquin too. Like we we're, were just like cracking up about it, you know, like you know, some like something went wrong. It's like, well, let's just chill out, let's drink some mate, you know, we're gonna make some mate, you know, like let's 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 have a siesta, you know. It's just it's just different than like what we're used to, you know. Mm-hmm. I so like that. but I'm now yeah, certainly more laid back. Like it'll kind of figure itself out, you know. Like yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, Don't like whatever. About it. 
Yeah, drink some latte, that's you know, sweet. like it's, it's good, you know. Life is a little bit you know? so yeah, it's but it's different in that respect for sure. And like staying out that late, like I'm not like super built for that anymore, but I tried my darndest. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do it. I mean, it just sounds like an unreal experience. I mean, let alone the hunting sounded incredible. Like, yeah, probably something that not many people get to even see. Yeah. You know? No, no. I mean, the whole time I was down there, I was just like constantly reminding myself of like where I was, what I was doing, like all that, because like it's easy. I mean, you guys get it. Like you guys, you know, fish a ton, like it starts to become like kind of a grinder, you know, like all that stuff. Like, but then like, I would just like sort of like be like, okay, here's where we are. This is what you're look doing. at what we're doing. Yeah, like yeah. let's just sort of like ignore whatever stupid you know uh, complaints you have because they're not relevant at all mm-hmm. compared to where you are right now. Like, shut up. You know, appreciate what's around you because this ranch has been there since you know 1928, and you have wow. the privilege of hunting there. You know, yeah. like just be happy that you're there. So like. There was a lot of moments like that for me where it was like, wow, like this is, you know, kind of like the, like the pinnacle, you know, like, I don't know how I could, could beat it, you know? And that's, that's pretty awesome because like, I hope to go back there for as long as I can, you know, and I'm very thankful for Joaquin, my partner, like to, to be able to even have the invitation to do this is just like amazing, you know, yeah. like crazy. You know, that's the wicked thing. Like you got that experience and you were getting paid to do it. Yeah, it's like crazy. It's not like, oh, yo, I dropped this and I got to go there for a week. It's like, dude, you lived it. You for lived sure. it and, and it, you got paid to do it. Like, that's yeah. like to be, and I think you guys are like definitely like know this too. Like, to be able to be like in something like that, like when you're in like a good bite or like you're in like a good week of fishing, like when you're in it and you're fully surrounded by it, like I think it's the coolest feeling ever. It's like, electric. Like yeah. you don't want it. You don't want a day off. Cause you're like, you're in it and you're like the next day, like you're going to figure out more and the next day you're going to figure out more. Like you're just like surrounded by it. I, for me, that's like my favorite thing about oh, hunting, yeah. fishing or guiding. Like when, you, when everything clicks, when like you, when you notice, like, let's just use fishing. For example, when you notice the river comes up by a hundred CFS, or if you're hunting, you notice the wind picks up by two miles an hour because you've been in it, you know, and you, you're so physically aware of it. I think that's just like the coolest thing ever. That's the that's the pinnacle of like fishing and yes. hunting outdoors yeah. is when you're that yeah. in touch with nature. Like yes. you like you, you don't even think about it. You just react at that yes. point. You don't and you think go about to, yeah. 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 And you like go to the spot where you think they're gonna whether it's fishing or game or and you go to the spot because the wind is doing this and the and whatever it, is doing this, the tide and it works up, and it works perfectly. Like there's that Perfect. Yeti video. There's that Yeti video. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it about David Magnum, the tarpon guy, you mm-hmm. know, and he talks about that, you know, like where everything lines, the puzzle, like all the cogs come together and it doesn't happen very often. I'm sure you guys no. agree. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a rare thing, maybe a couple times a year where it all comes together. And then you're like, wow. Yeah. Like that, that paid that, off. Yeah. You that's know? the reason why you do it. Exactly. Well, now I mean, you got like one full season under your belt. Like you'll go back into it with like, all this knowledge of like what you got now like I, yeah and especially for a hunt like that that seems like it's pretty high success rate like like you're going in like super dialed oh yeah like next like, year oh like, yeah like, i'm so i'm so stoked about next year like because like yeah you got a better feel for it. you know how to age them like all that stuff but like you know i mean going into it like just giddy you know i'm just like <laughs> i'm just like giddy to be back down there you know, yeah, because yeah. like, and, and like for full transparency, I mean, I don't make hardly any money when I'm there. Like, you know, like it's for me, it's like, I, I don't care because like, it's just like, you're in this like incredible, incredible. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's such a privilege to even be there at all. You know, like, I mean, it's amazing. So like to be, have that feeling like we were talking about where everything comes together, you're surrounded by it and like it works. You're just like, boom man that's awesome. that's, that's pretty cool you know Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah no it sounds like a hell of a trip dude and i'm sure more stories will come up over the next couple times we record like i'm sure now that you're back and yeah you'll keep thinking of stuff but we'll we'll try to get uh we'll try to get some more pictures from your trip up on 
on like Instagram and stuff, just to kind of show people some cool stuff. Some of the scenery was just wicked. So sure. whatever you got, we'll throw up on there. Um, we got a couple more things we'll roll into here and this will be good from you. I mean, Will, I mean, you can use it from anything that was in Argentina or whatever too. Uh, we haven't done this segment in a while, but uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to do a little geared up segment here. Uh, just about like springtime, whether it's fishing or even like hunting, whatever. I know we got like turkey seasons ramping up here. Um, but do you have anything, I guess, whether it was from your trip or just like rolling back into Montana now that you're like, oh my God, like I definitely need to, to like load up on this or like key, key things going for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I will have, g- give me a second here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's going. He's going for a visual right. reference. Obviously. He opened a tea package uh, five minutes ago that absolutely blew my mind. So whatever he's grabbing now, this is so gonna be these crazy. these little slippers that you're looking at here. Oh jeez, <laughs> these are called albergatas. Okay, they Albert- come with it, mate. Say it again. <laughs> albergatas. Okay. All right. And th- this is what the gauchos wear. The cowboys down there. Of course, they never get off their horses. <laughs> but these little deals, these are awesome. These cost, and it's not really relevant to most of our followers, but in Argentina, these cost 10 bucks for a pair of these things. Yeah. And they are freaking awesome. <laughs> are the bottom of those made out of rope? What is that? Uh, rubber. <laughs> like a, like a, maybe like off of a, a tree or something. Rubber. <laughs> these things. Stag weather. Yeah. <laughs> no, not, yeah. I wish Uh, these little deals uh, and you can find them. They're very similar in the States, I guess, to like Tom's, but like (laughs) that sounds so lame. So you need to get the Argentine version. Well, those babies are handmade one at a time. Yeah, exactly. And they're $10. So it's not really applicable to anybody listening, but this is my geared up because I wear these things like constantly like all the time and they're just great great little slip-ons sort of like a hey dude you know like a hey dude mm-hmm. kind, of, kind, right of, on. kind of shoe but uh i dig that yeah i mean they're they're awesome that's what all the gauchos wear you know like the, the legitimate cowboys and then they wear these fucking they have these big belts like a sash almost and they have mm-hmm. like five different knives on them with blades like this big <laughs> Like those gauchos are so bad. Awesome. Always not a noise. Oh, dude, I would just try to like, br- and none of them spoke English down there at the ranch I was at. But I would just like try to brush up with them, you know, like, mm-hmm. well, amigo, come on by, you know, and, like, Will's like, I'm cool too. Yeah, yeah like, totally. They all got like, like giant scars and like, yeah, knife, and they'd be like, like, they'd be, like looking scar. at me, like I'd be like struggling to like, right? It takes me a long time to like really, really cape out like a skull. Like I go really slow. I'm just not that good at it. And, but I, you know, get it done. And so then they'd like all come around and they would like laugh at me. Oh, no. <laughs> they were like, they were like my, they were like my buddies by the end of it, you know, like yeah. Sergio, Abel, Victor, like they're all my dogs. But like, this is when I got these, <laughs> when I so rolled much. up with these on, when I finally went to town, they're like, me small, same, you know, that's what mm. it like, yeah, they're like my boys. So. That's, That's my sweet. geared up pick. Not really. I like pick. that. What are they called? Let's say it. What was it again? Albert got this. Of course. Albert of course. Got yep. Albert got this. Dope. Yeah. Sweet, sweet little slip ons. And the, the key for anyone that maybe is in Argentina, get them. The, you want them to be tight when you get them, like a tight enough where they seem like they don't fit because they stretch. So, like, you get the uh, Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good tip. That's pro yeah, tip. Pro there. Tip. Yeah. Tip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tight. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's shit tight. Yeah, that's like you're a T I T tight. <laughs> I like that. Well, I'm gonna use this as my my annual public service announcement that everybody needs to buy like six headlamps immediately. Oh, oh my god, that's a great one. Yeah. Wow. The because dude, feeling. I like it. I haven't needed <laughs> one really all winter, but it came to the like a week ago and i was like i've bought no less than 15 headlamps in the past two years and I'll how, how long did it last i don't yeah, know they they, they disappear gone. they disappear well, yeah, exactly gone. i think they last a long time but they disappear that's the i don't thing. know where, they, where go. they go no one knows in a pocket how and nobody's ever found one be gone all of them 
Nobody's no ever stole it. No, yeah, one no stole one it. Stole it was it. on my head. Gone. Where'd it go? If you, that's the rivers now. <laughs> if, if you or your your parents or a loved one has a Costco or a Sam's Club membership and there's bulk packs of headlamps, that would be the most beneficial buy ever to hey, buy them those, in bulk. Honestly, those little energizer ones that you get like they're red or gray or whatever that have like the three light one. Yeah. They're like 15 bucks, but like, dude, you don't need a Petzl or anything like that. You just, just need one of work. those. You just need one of those to see. And you're like, going to lose it anyway. So exactly. yeah, it will, it will I used to you. buy, I used to buy like the Petzl's, like the really yeah. high end ones. I thought this is, this is the deal. I'm like, what am I doing? It's gone within a week anyway. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just, that was mine, dude. Like I, that's a good one. It's every spring too. Like you're just wow. like, oh, whatever. And then you think, oh, I probably left some in that, in that one pack or like, oh, that jacket probably, eh? No, no, it's gone. <laughs> no. Like how dude? Like how, how do I, I know, I know, man? Know. Like I have the only the one I can find that like, I have when I was a senior in high school. But right. I've gone through 15 headlamps and I have no clue where they are. At. Yeah, and the it's only one I can find, it. like the battery door is like blown off. <laughs> like I got like a rubber band holding a couple of AAAs in there. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're you're so tired because you're using a headlamp. You should be tired, and everything about like keeping tidy and organized just goes right out the window once you get yeah. but it's truck. not like once i got back in the truck i just like yeeted it out the yeah. window yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it feels that way the next like, time you need it like, where did it go oh, i must have just thrown it must yeah. have launched it yeah <laughs> which seems wow. the most logical actually mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway there you go buy some goddamn headlamps <laughs> that's a pro tip that is a pro, that is tip. A pro tip spray paint them orange yeah something cody how about you oh man um i don't even know the brand of the the bead i bought but is it trout beads or... yeah oh yeah it's uh it's trout beads 10 mils Wait, craziest thing trout beads is based out of bemidji minnesota really oh oh you're talking the brand i'm just saying beads trout oh beads. sure but like trout trout cody beads. was just generally I'm saying just trout general beads, and there's actually the a little beard. thing that you put on your line <laughs> no, Will's no. Talking yamamoto cody's saying stick bait <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, uh... yum dinger <laughs> no trout trout beads is based out of bemidji Oh, interesting. The mecca of really steel how steelhead fishing, really. Yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. Headed up to the brule. <laughs> and the only reason I know this is because Newley, our our boy Matt Newell, which uh I have you ever met Newell, Pink? I have not met him. I know of him. Me and Sobe rolled deep with Newell. Um he has it on the side of that uh machine he drive. What do you call those machines that you drive around that have the snow bears? Bar. Yeah, snow, yeah. Snow bears. Uh trout beads. He's like he's like hooked up with that dude. Huh. Interesting. But love I a good bead. Good. Yeah. Well, what I was gonna say is I had been messing around with both like the hard beads that you peg and then mm -hmm. the soft beads. Mm -hmm. And I think I actually prefer the soft beads o over the hard beads. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of a pain in the ass because you like, you have to figure out a different way to peg them and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, I got told this very early on that scent and trout like seem to mingle pretty well. Like I always thought that was kind of a gimmick, but uh, they're like, Oh, pick up this scent. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I am not the that shit does not work. It's like putting yeah. on a little fairy dust on your bait and sure. wishing it upon a star. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gonna tell you, there is might be a little something to it. I hate dude, to admit it. There's but something to it. There might the be something thing, to dude, it. Yeah. I mean, so I got so similar to you, Cody. Like when I first showed up to Alaska, I was like, guys were fishing beads for the trout and i was like well whatever put any bead on there i'm like it looks yeah. like you know like fucking go catch them and like the one guy that taught me like a lot he he'd be out on his porch on his cabin painting his beads with fingernail polish yeah, it's, it's yeah. mind-blowing yeah like how i'm set up and like dude he would kick my ass out there every single day like it's like it's the crazy, crazy shit 
it's the crazy shit. Like you look at that fish's temperament because you can see yeah. them. You know they're just hanging in the current, whatever. Yeah. You're like, I don't care what you say, that fish can't be caught. Yeah. And then like your buddy will do something a little bit different, and mm-hmm. it'll roll around like it had never seen a bait before. Yeah. I, I I just don't understand it. No, it's, it's the amazing. craziest thing. Those guys that are really good bead fishermen, I'm not. But like those guys that are really good, they catch them all. Like they catch yeah. all of them. They catch yeah. all of them. They don't like all of them. A hundred percent. Like vacuum. They catch them. It's all. it's like fishing yeah. a hair. It's like fishing a hair jig that a smallmouth has never seen a hair jig. Before. Yes, a hundred percent. Like they, the guys that have the good it. beads, like they catch them all. Like they don't miss a single one. Like they they get them all. Like it's impressive. But I was the same way. I was like, I was like, what kind of difference could this make? Yeah, this I, is- I'm like, dude, it looks the same thing. It's this little rubber ball. What is the big fucking I know. Difference? I'm like, and he, I and use orange or I use pink. What, what yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like <laughs> what difference does it make? But he's out there like hand paint with fingernails. Yes. And he had yes. certain fingernail polish that he used and like and certain ones he wouldn't use. Like, I mean, he was it's, so dialed in and like he just absolutely raked them. It um, It is the craziest uh-huh. thing. Yeah. Uh, like I've, nuts. yeah, it, it is very nuts. Mm-hmm. It's something I'm, I'm just now getting introduced and putting myself in the fire with, but I am completely addicted. Like, give me all the info. Give me mm-hmm. all of it. I want to keep going. But anyway, soft beads versus hard beads. I've learned that soft beads, I can, it actually absorbs a little bit more scent. Mm-hmm. And like when you're bobber fishing, what I've been, what I've been doing, I am no expert at this, very newbie, but when you're running your shots for a bobber to keep them in line rather than the, you know, your spawn or be just rolling around up next to the bobber, you have to run shot. So I always run a very small shot on the bottom and putting my rubber bead, which acts as another egg, like close to the hook. And then you run your, your shot. So I like rubber beads versus hard beads. It's easier when you're running around mm-hmm. on the river, easier to put them on. A um, lot less muss and fuss. Well, I think I think the soft beads too. I mean, when the fish grabs it, I, it, it, it I, I think there's like a split second where they honestly, hold onto it. They don't blow it out yes. quite as quick. Yeah, because yeah, they have some give. There's some give when they grab yes, it. Yes, it feels like, real for a yes, second. Yeah, because yeah. like I've seen you, yeah. like I know you've seen it, but when I first actually watched one bite, yeah, it doesn't even look like unless they like see the bait and they come out and swim and grab it. But there's a lot of times it feels like you're just flossing them. No, I yeah, mean they it's, just like it's pump like their they, mouth like, open. Yeah, yeah like it. it's not like an attack. They're like, bro, they're so they, lazy. They're the laziest fucking fish of until all you time. hook them. I mean, they like literally, yeah, until you hook them, they literally just like roll on it and just like, Meh. yeah, like I've I've seen them where they're sitting in the current and my bobber will go down the edge and you'll watch them come out like actively come out and pursue like a spawn bag oh. or something. But then there's times where you're like flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping yeah. and flipping and flipping at the same fucking thing over and over and over again for like 30 minutes you're like how much time have i wasted on this like 28 inch steelhead right like way too long and all of a sudden you're like uh oh oh no i do have him i do have him and he's like really see it no and he's like 12 feet in front of you like he hasn't moved they're so fucking lazy there's a great a great soft bead guy who you should check out it's called um never quit fishing is his instagram and he makes the most bitching soft beads like Hmm. that guy is awesome like he's the man todd is his name like okay legitimate like super super cool soft beads um but yeah i'm a a bead guy too i mean i'm a a, i i'm moving into the 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 swung wet flies you know like we talked about the, the natural progression but yeah I still get down with the bead. Don't get me wrong, you know. Yeah, it it seemed I don't know, like because you know you see, I mean it's not like a secret thing over there. It's kind of no, like the no. rule, like no. people fish, people fish these streams. Like there's yeah. there's definitely places you can get away from people, but right, but it's people know about fit. it. Yeah, but it's like the the general thing is you got to use a spawn bag, which I'm not knocking spawn bags because they they work. Very work, well, but it's so lame. I think like it's so gay tying those things up. Like <laughs> that's why you have friends who do that for you, and you're like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I'm going this weekend. Do you mind if I drop you some? Know, off? Yeah, like I'll take like I don't know twenty of them. 
but <laughs> not that <laughs> like, not that fishing a beat is any cooler. I no, would, like, say that, but like it's just easier. It's more convenient. Heck yeah, it's easier. I just put it on my hook. <laughs> just, <laughs> just run it up my line an inch and. Yeah, I pegged there the thing go. with a toothpick and we're good to go. Yeah, good you know? to go. Let's keep rolling. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, anyway, steelhead fishing is absolutely amazing. And it's quickly becoming my favorite Cody, fish to catch. Cody, you'll come, you'll come to Idaho this winter and you will just I'm, you, I'm, just I'm gonna be that. like I'm gonna be like one of those uh those elk that you see in National Geographic just spraying his leg, just oh, 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 oh. what you're gonna be is like your beard is gonna grow like <laughs> long and then all of a sudden you're going to be like living in a houseboat like, <laughs> yeah. like, my fish whistle in my pocket just no that's what's going to happen you'll be like you'll be like going to like you'll be like buying batteries for your trolling motor on your drift boat and then you're like <laughs> changing them at the end of the season to get your money back that's yeah what's <laughs> that's the steelhead progression yeah like, literally it, fuck, it, it, it messes up your entire life oh like, i believe it life. tacoma inbound preferably 2002 not tacoma no no you'll be you're in the hill no. guy you're uh, no you're you're an oregon go you're an oregon coast guy all the way oh uh, nice that's so nice. much better than washington it's not nice <laughs> no it is it is it is it's so much better uh, or we oh. go to bc we go to bc we go fish the ski now you're talking it, you know yes. and then now you're let's, talking let's not screw around let's fish the big river you know yeah no i like yeah. that that's the game plan there Man. Yeah, I like it too. We swing Spade them. fish, catch one fish a week. God, and it was sounds... a great. It was a great week. And it's like oh, musky man. fishing. It's so similar to musky fishing. The yeah. the spay steelhead guys versus the musky guys. It's like yes. man, we moved like we had two grabs today, which you would agree, like Cody, like you know, you get two follows. You know, like that's yeah, like, yeah. a pretty decent day. You know, yeah. like it's so similar. It's amazing the, yeah. the transparency. You know. <laughs> Okay, I hate to cut you off. There's a photographer who lives out there, huge steelhead fisherman. Yeah. Uh, Baca. Uh, I can't remember his first name, but very good photographer. Baca is his okay. last name. But he was making fun of us the entire time we were musky fishing. He's like, oh, this is nothing compared to steelhead. And I'm like giving him shit right back. I'm yeah. like, buddy, this is the most amazing day I've ever seen musky fishing in my life. Fuck your steelhead. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 the same. He was thing. Showing, like, yeah, he was showing yeah. me videos of it. I'm like, oh, okay. I get it. it. But it's like it's in the same, it's in the same breath where like mm -hmm. if you get a grab on a CLFI and you you don't hook it, which usually you don't, you All know, right. it's like a follow on the yeah. musky, right? So like those guys are counting that. Like if you get like two grabs, like man, that's a great day. That's a know? great day. It's like sort of when you're musky fishing, you know, if you get like, I don't know, two or three follows. Yeah, maybe follow and something. like maybe a bite yeah. or something. Right. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, that was awesome. You know, like, so it's it's in the same breath. But like those yeah. steelhead, those serious spay steelhead guys will never admit that they're on the same level as musky gear fishermen. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what yep. it is. A hundred percent. And like I come from a fairly neutral platform because I grew up mm -hmm. in northern Minnesota, you know, but like. That's what it is because of those like serious spay steelhead guys, which are, no, like, they're now they're pure, I've, man. They're now I've, yeah, like now I've <laughs> sort of moved into that, but like it's the same thing as like the serious musky angle. It, like, I think, yeah, like yeah. It, they're 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 no different. I mean, it's just a different sort of setup you're throwing, but it's like the the measure of success is the exact same. Yeah, three grabs, steelhead fishing, swinging all day. It's an amazing day. Musky yep. fishing, if you get three follows and one eat, great right. day, right? Like, right. I mean, right? It's really about the just elitist vibes of the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's really like, what it comes elitist. down to. Musky fishermen and, <laughs> and spay See. steelhead fishermen are the exact same person. If they sat down at a bar and had a beer together, it's the same thing. Yeah. The musky fishermen are crackheads, and uh, the the spay fishermen are pretentious white collar people. That's about the difference. <laughs> for the most part, it's not, it's not, except for the guides, like oh, the guides for, are yeah, for the guides, yeah, like, yeah. Yep. Of course, the clients, yeah, they're they're like the most upper class, but like, yeah, I mean, the guides <laughs> that guide muskies and the guys that guide same you know thing. swing, you know, <laughs> trips probably about the same. Yeah, but you know, 
It's it's all we fun. digress. It's all. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Well, let's the, the only other thing we got to do, and we don't even need to go through all of these if we don't want to, because I think this is going to probably take too long anyway. But there is uh, a, an update I'll give on. So Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, there is an, an event coming up in th- on Thursday. It starts. So like a day away um, on where, where this one's on. Uh, uh, where John. are we going? St. John's River. Another Florida tournament. Um, so here I'll go. So the update is we have a score update. And it's actually very interesting. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. So we got the current scoreboard is in first place right now, Cody Honor with eight. Hey, let's give it up. Let's give it up. Oh. Cody, wow. Cody got yeah. first in the last two. Did I really? You did the last one. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry Kane. I did. Yes, I knew that. I knew. That. <laughs> so, okay, so Before. Cody's sitting in first. Bart sitting in second with eight, and then me and Sobe tied with eleven. So it's really tight, actually. That is tight. Which e- we all did so fucking bad at Harris Chain. Yeah, yeah. Just throwing that out there because yeah, I, yeah. I had like who won, who won that derby? Was that uh, Trey McKinney? No, Trey did good though. Oh, yeah, he did good. Trey did good. Trey got like seven. But anyway, hey, we all hey, did terrible. We just talked about how about Rick Clun? He dragged Trey fishing in the locks. Do you see that? He posted that on the Facebook. What did he do? Oh, you I didn't guys. see it. You guys, I didn't see that. how do I know this and you don't? Do you tell him. Rick Clun. I follow him on the Facebook. Maybe, I'll maybe you're the up. only one who follows. <laughs> he does snail traps. Will still uses Facebook quite often. Often, <laughs> it was a DM Rick, from Rick, Rick Klon. Okay, okay, okay. Here's what I'm going to say. So look up, look up, look up Rick Klon on, on, on my Facebook, face. and he posted this picture of Trey. I think it's Trigger Trey catching a fish like in the lock, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and he posted it like, I thought we couldn't fish in locks, like it, like, but he had the, I. You guys should just check it out because, like, it's the shifting of the torch. Wow. I'm, and I'm, no doubt. I'm a retired bass angler. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it's fun for me to sort of watch from an outside perspective because I'm just – I'm swinging a, you know, a wet fly for steelhead. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But I will say this. Rick, might be time to retire. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It was time to retire, like, 10 years ago. Right, but and shout, out, and shout out Trey because it was legal. Because in the Bass Live, this is how deep I am in this. He asked, "Uh, is this legal to fish, whatever in the lock?" And it was, I guess. And you know, he whacked him. So shout out Trey, Trey Good Trey wow. for knowing the rules. <laughs> for knowing the rules. And then Rick Clun, is it really necessary to drag this young gun on Facebook? I don't think it is, but wow. it's on there. I mean, I assume it's well, clearly on no one saw it. So. <laughs> I saw it. Rick, dude, Rick did. It must have been progressing if, if Rick got his phone all the way out. Well, it was like <laughs> a shot. It was, no, it was a he shot. Sent it to his like, wife, and he's like, honey, hey, 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 I want one thing. Can we talk about real quick? Uh, speaking yeah. of best, what happened to James Overstreet? James Overstreet? I, I don't know, know why. I don't, the legendary photographer. Yeah, J.O., you guys don't follow J.O. on Facebook? I do, yeah, I, do. I do. Did something happen to him? Oh, dude. You guys, are, are, are we even so bass just, fans? Why are you dude. so informed? And we're so what, 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 what are you doing down there? Dude, he had, he had time to find a Why are you guys clarity dude, from Argentina? J- dude. JO has like 30 days to live, you guys. Like, what? he's like dying. What? Like, he, what? He has like a, yeah. What? Oh my God. You guys. You guys. What, what, does he have I a think I, illness? This is the key. Siestas are the key. It's that guys, mess. Yeah, yeah J-O, J-O is like J-O is like basically he's like done. Like it's over. Like no. look at his Facebook. Like yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like it's done. Like, what? Crazy. What? I think I think sometimes the folks forget that I was a tournament bass angler in my day. Um, those, I'm looking at his recent post here. It says, uh, "Those of you who have followed my path likely know that I was recently hospitalized for congenitive uh, neurological issues." The original thought was that I, it was related to a high dose steroids that I've been taking for an autoimmune or autoimmune disease for several years. 
My memory issues are still ongoing and my memory is greatly impaired at this time. Uh, it is still believed that this is somehow related to my treatments or another undiagnosed autoimmune disorder. After discussing in great length with my family and doctor, I have decided to take a break from social media while we continue to find a diagnosis. I look forward to my return. J.O. But like, wow. dude, when you look at his post before that, I mean, he's like disoriented. Like it's like the, what he was saying is like all fucked up. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing it, Cody? Yeah. I, I'm seeing what you're saying. Yeah. Hmm. And like, I've been a J.O. fan since, do you guys follow him on Instagram? Yeah. 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 yeah Cletus. Cletus, you know, Cletus. Yep. Yep, talk the about deer. Cletus. I mean, yeah, the Cle Cletus. Like wow, that's I'm a huge I'm a huge JO fan. I'm a fan of bass fishing, like always have been, you know, but like JO man, like he's go he's gonna die in the next six weeks, probably. Yeah, that's wow. too bad. Jeez. That's it's horrible. horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. But he's a legend. He's he's a goat. He he really did you meet him, Sam or Cody? Did you get you I've guys have, I've met him a, a handful of times, yeah. He's, I've never is he a, a, a beauty? I mean he, he must be a beauty. Yeah. Yes. I've been really close to him seeing watching him do his deal and I've yeah he's a beauty. He's yeah. been in my boat two or three times now and he's he's always like just a beauty, just giving shit and wow. sure, just like know, southern being a, being like a awesome guy. dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, when he posts the Cleet the Chronicles of Cletus, like that was like honestly the highlight of like my deer season for a few years. It was so pretty like, sweet. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Yeah. So shout out to J.O. I think it's important that we recognize that on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, no kidding, dude. Holy smokes. You know, yeah. So he's probably he's probably going to be dead soon, but maybe not. I don't know. I mean, maybe. But. Well, shout out to J.O. Damn. Sorry, sorry to get so heavy there, but. I, no, I, no yeah, dude. That's. Yeah. I just it's something no, that I didn't know. I didn't he, know. He's a legend, dude. He's a legend of the sport in his own realm, and he he changed outdoor photography and and in bass fishing for yes for the better. Dude, and, I mean, he's one of yeah, the oh, he's yeah. probably the premier uh, BSS yeah. photographers. I don't, I don't know. Who I else. even remember being down at opens when Cody was fishing on the pro side. I was fishing on the coast side. They yeah. said we they would even announce it. We brought out the big guns this week. We have James Overstreet here yeah. and him and him. They would announce it. Mm -hmm. Being like letting you guys know we have the best of the best here capturing this event mm -hmm. and you guys on the media side and it would be a really big deal and it, and it was it felt like a big deal because he was a legend yeah it was a big deal damn well maybe how about let let's burn through these fantasy picks this week we'll we'll dedicate this this week's fantasy picks to to J O shout yeah. out J O shout out J O this one's going out to you all right so. I do. I have. I have Bart's here. He sent them to me just so I can read them off here. So Bart's going with uh, Bucket A, Patrick Walters. Uh, bucket B, Brandon Lester. Uh, C, John Cox. D, Brandon Polinick, and E, Cliff Prince. Okay. There you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Meh. Meh. I like. I like the John Cox pick. I mean. I He's like on a heater, though. as per usual. I, I love John Cox. Love him to death. But, meh, the rest of it, eh. Eh. Meh. Meh. Yeah, whatever. All right, Sam, you want to go? Yeah. Um, I got to pull mine up here. I feel like after after a tough Harris chain and just, like, seeing top-end dudes at the bottom and seeing people struggle, like, I'm, like, I, I struggled in fantasy picks. I needed to, like, shoot for par. This is me. Shooting for par, picking, <laughs> picking the people I feel like I should just pick to at least get a decent score, and people you you know people believe in. Um, bucket A, Trey McKinney, Trigger Trey. How Trigger can he Trey. lose? He can't oh, lose. Trey. Nineteen year old absolute assassin. He, can we get him on the pod? I feel like someone's got to know him. Buddy Hayes knows him well, dude. We'll get him on the pod, and maybe Honor. Let's get oh, Trigger Cody Trey. On. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bucket B, Austin Felix. This might be my dark horse that either scores yeah. me off points or yeah. is bad. Day two. Day <laughs> that might be, two, that might be gut shot, shot, bro. Day two at Harris Chain, he figured something out, and uh, he dropped a 19-pound sack, and it just gave me belief like, okay, yeah, he's got it in him, and he's from the north like us. He understands right. grass victories. We're going to St. John's. Uh, he can do it. He can do it. Watch, yeah. watch Felix finish well. Okay. okay. I, I can see that. Yeah. 
Bucket C, John Cox. That's a of staple. Course. <laughs> uh, bucket D, Brandon Polnick, uh, a previous guest of Pass the Barb. So how could I not pick him? That would be just Still insane that we even got him on the podcast. Um, and then Bucket E, uh, I want to say, I really feel like they're second cousins. Um, Scott Martin, second cousins, Cody Honor, Scott Martin. <laughs> and that's, that's my fantasy picks for the week. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hell of a lineup per se. Corey McKinney, Austin, Felix, John Cox, Brandon Paul, and Scott Martin. That's a, that's a lineup of heavy hitters. No heavy doubt. hitters, dude. Yeah. They're all, they're all taking steroids and we know it. Yeah. Um, but they're yeah. good for that's why they do produce. There, hey, there's no sleepers in that in that pick there. No. You know, I like it. I like it so. Cody, what do you got? All right. So actually, my lineup looks a little bit different for me. So <clears throat> bucket A. Got to go with him because he's just like standing out and looking at looking at me in this straight in the face. Stetson Blaylock. Oh, bucket love A. It. Love it. Always. Having a good year. Having a good year. Always yeah, shows is. up. Yes, he, he does. Never he talked about. Big, yeah. Never talked about. That guy is yeah. so consistent. He's really consistent. Solid dude, too. Bucket B, another one. No one likes to pick him. Brandon Lester. Mm. Sure. Mm. Love B. Lest. Yes. Yes. Crushes. Yes. Absolutely crushes. Another great year. Bucket C, John mm-hmm. Cox. Got to. Yes. Yeah. Bucket D, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get the phone back up. Bucket D, Brandon Cobb. Oh, Brandon Cobb. Cobb. BC. BC. Do you, did you see what I'm rolling at? Yeah, I like it. Get I like it. it. Hmm. Bucket E went with John Cruz. Ooh. Out of that whole bucket E, always does well at the St. John's. Yeah, he's always too good at St. John's. Yeah. He does. Yeah, yeah, he's a junkie yeah. fisherman. He likes that. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about and it. He, I mean, he's won man. there before, but yes. every other time it seems like he's in the top twenty. So, yeah, you know, I think that's a that's a really solid lineup, Cody, and I think you have the best lineup out of all of them. Thank you, Will. Ooh. That's why we're leading. And the nice thing is, for me, <laughs> I've got no one to pick because I have have excluded myself. Unfortunately. Because I am, I am still into bass fishing. Obviously, mm. well, you did. Tell us, did you did lose. Tell us predictions. Tell us last season. season. You were the loser. Uh, yeah, I lost. I'm supposed <laughs> to still run a five k. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, the only reason I lost is because out of sheer laziness on my part, not because of you know strategy. It's just it's all it's hearsay. All I I it totally is. all hearsay. You're telling me you follow Rick Clun on Facebook, you for but you forget to set your fantasy lineup. <laughs> but I know that Rick Clun posted a picture of Trigger Trey in the lock. Fucking one, and, and he said, I thought we couldn't do this. That was the caption. And um, we're emotionally invested here. Oh, I'm so you into message it. Rick Clun on AIM, but you don't set your bass master lineup. <laughs> I'm so into it still. I mean, I still I love bass fishing, I still love it. But so my lineup would be, and I don't know the buckets, and, and that's the unfortunate part for me. But I it's take Cox. I pick Cox for sure. I think he's bucket three. Is that would that be right? Yeah, he's in C. Three. Yeah, yeah. Bucket three, and then I pick. Is Jason Christie in the Sturby? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and then I pick My him. My father. Yeah, and, and and none of you guys picked him, but I like him. I like him in this. I and he he's has. Got, really, he's got panache, man. He does. He's got panache. He's got savvy. That's right. He does. Um, that uh, yeah yeah. Him and him and Greg Hackney, those two together, yeah. like if Hackney. they had a child. It would be oh, the next oh, killing of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Put a one-ounce jig in their hand, and I mean, <laughs> they're going to work. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. One-ounce grass master, and they're getting them. But And I don't know all the bucks, but I picked Trigger Trey for sure. He's my dog. You know, I don't care that he's in the lock catching them. Fuck this one. Um, <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that. Don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't Just, mean are you that. talking about the guy that holds the record with Kevin Van Dam for the most classic win? Two, yeah, two, no, two hours, 28 minutes. Yeah, I wrote it down. Obviously, I, I don't oh, mean oh. that because I follow him on Facebook and none of you guys do. So, well, <laughs> he's not about to follow you back. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> That's okay. He's texting uh, his wife right now. Update that Facebook. Unfollow. You. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not picking Rick Clun. Let that be heard here first. Oh, it's um, loud and clear. Yeah. Um, 
And <laughs> he's and, gonna win. <laughs> and no, <laughs> he's and gonna no win. Effort. I'm updating my fantasy right now. He's remember, gonna... remember when Rick Clun was running the Z18 and everyone else was running a 20 with the, foot boat? With, do you remember <laughs> the center council looking yes. deal that he had? Yes, he had the nitro Z18. Everyone else had a 20 footer. I Why? mean, because he's different. Because he's Rick Clun, and he's gonna throw. He's gonna throw the jerk bait. We know yeah. that. Oh yeah. Um, so then in my other bucket, I, I don't know. I don't even know what's in the bucket. So I have what? Jason Christie. Yep. John Cox. John, John Cox. Cox. Trigger Trey. I got Trey. two more to pick. What's one of the Japanese fellows? I'd like to pick one of them. They're, uh, they're probably Kenya? too far. <laughs> like, oh, yo, I would like to select one. I would. I would like... <laughs> Will's yeah, on a heater That's not right a bad. I, Will's, wow, Will's... I'm glad this is two and a half hours deep. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to pick one of the Japanese fellows. Uh, All right, we'll, go, we'll go with Taku E2 for Will. <laughs> I like mm. he's like the live scope genius. Isn't no, he? Vegeta. Oh, Koyo. Vegeta. Koyo. 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 Oh. <laughs> I don't know which one to pick. I thought they were all good. We'll go with Kiyoya for you. That's, okay. that's solid. Well, that's you four, want and, then I got, and then I got five, and I've got a live, uh, a real dark horse pick. Uh-oh. And then I pick. And, you know, I was thinking about this when he won the Classic because I picked him for one of our little things. No one else picked him. And I did because I liked his name. Justin Hamner. No, it's not. Must we forget. Solid. Yeah. I picked him for one of the little fantasy deals uh, many moons ago. I picked him because I liked his name. And then all of a sudden he won a Classic, so I pick him. I'm certain he's not in sort of the bucket orientation, but uh, I pick him. Yeah, Hamner. I like it. I like it. Solid lineup. All like right. It. I got uh I don't know. This this week made me want to just throw up because I didn't know what to do here. Um I picked a lot of these for not good reasons. So I got Jay Lee, bucket A. Ooh, yeah, I mean, oh wow. No one picked dude. Jay Lee. That's a dude, good call. He's yeah, so I like that. He's, yeah. And I feel like he's like he's not having a good enough season. Like he's mad, you know. Yeah, like I think he's, he's going into this. Hey, yeah. speaking of Jay Lee, what's Matt Lee doing? Tell him about that, Sam. You, you, mean, you, you mean okay, you mean, his brother? <laughs> you mean yeah. Jordan's brother? M. Lee, he is a brother. Jordan's a, Jordan's no, brother. No, no, no. Cody, he's referred to as Jordan's brother. Okay, it's Jordan's brother. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I they let I, him out. No, no, no. On the Christmas card. <laughs> Cody, Cody, and I used to in campgrounds, whether it be tents, small KOA cabins, or oh wherever we were staying for opens, we would stay up late into the night talking about different references of what they would call Jordan Lee's brother because he had just won back to book classics, and he's of course the older brother, Matt Lee. And we would just go on and on about being like, you know, you think at family functions, you know, they walk up to him and go, Jordan's brother. Could you pass the scalp? <laughs> <laughs> and the first ah. part, they go, Jordan had a great year, blah, blah, blah. And then Jordan's brother, he got married. It was fine. <laughs> oh, my God. There are hundreds of them. <laughs> I can't reference them now, but if I could, oh I'd give anything. You should go back. And we had hundreds, yeah. Can we get them on just so we could make the title featuring Jordan Lee's brother? Oh <laughs> you think he'd come on? Would he come on? No. Oh. he's. I don't know. He's pretty cool. I I like Matt. Matt's they seem awesome. like cool dudes. Matt's, like, a, Matt's come a cool on. dude. We'll hit him up. I bet he would come on. We'll I hit mean, him here's up. the here's the here's the gig, boys. They both have smoking hot wives. They do. Right? They've done yeah. well for themselves. Right. One's obviously better looking than the other. Clearly, and, and because... for that, it's open to interpretation, <laughs> not for us to decide. So we can't have him on, dude. I'll be so on that week. <laughs> Cody's on that pod, and Matt Lee is here. I will be out of this country. I'll be so far from Wi-Fi. I would not allow myself to be on that pod. I'll be here. We'll, t- we'll talk shop. We'll talk shop. Just <laughs> out. You're Let's like, what do you know that. about Rick Klon? Yeah, we'll talk about Rick Klon and James Overstreet, because you guys didn't even fucking know that he's dying. He's dead, and I did. Oh, Very true. Incredible. Well right. done, Will. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Upholding oh, the podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> Continue, Ryan. What do you got? Where was I? Oh, you're, Jordan you're with, Lee. Jordan I'm not Lee. entirely sure. All right. I picked Brandon Lester. Man. Oh, no B-Lest. 
So. And then I took John Cox, obviously. Brandon Polinick. And then E, I didn't know what to do, and I don't know why I'm listening to him. But I – Kyle Welcher was talking about how this tournament was setting up, and for some reason I picked Cliff Prince for that last one. But he's local. Okay, okay. Local. okay. I If I would have seen him in, in that bucket, I would have picked Cliff Prince. Just saying. As your champion so far, I would have. <laughs> well, I did. I did. So hopefully. So where is this really again? It's on the Harris chain. Thank you. St. John's. St. John's. Saint John's. Yeah. Where's Scott Martin in this whole mix? He's uh, in my bucket E. That's where he is. He's in bucket E. He is. He's riding deep. <laughs> he's told his uncle twice removed. He's in my bucket E. <laughs> I gave him a call and he said, yeah, pick me. And I did. <laughs> but yeah, Scotty, so too hot, and I we get along great. <laughs> Shoot, I, never mind. I'll wait till we're off of here. <laughs> oh man! All right. Anybody got anything else here? <laughs> no, I gotta get going, boys. I gotta go to. Bed. All right, all right. I think I think we burned this one to the ground. But well, great to have you back. Hey, so you'll be on you back. Thank you, thank you for making them safe. Thank you for sharing your experiences. And, and yeah. Why don't you just tell people what's next? Where are you headed to? Well, what's next? I got to move all my shit up to the barn tomorrow. But um, the barn's got Wi-Fi now. The barn's got Wi-Fi. We're <laughs> pretty excited about it. We got some internet connection up there. And uh, yeah, right now I'm at my brother's house in Helena. So yeah, barn bound. Uh, be there until July 20th and then Alaska for a month. So you yeah, imagine the party the mice have been having while you've been away. <laughs> I, I texted Dwayne. I, te I texted Dwayne, the landowner. I said, "How are the mice?" He said, "Not too bad." <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> not too bad. Incredible. I'm like, what the fuck? That's not really reassuring, you know. <laughs> oh, not <God>. too bad. <laughs> you know, they're there, but it's the presence yeah. isn't super felt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, it, and if there's any listeners below that have questions for Will, or, or I'm sure, you know, we missed questions. That would be great to, that, you know, would conjure more conversation. Please comment them down below. And I think he'll reference his trip and his travels and, and his work down there in many more pods to come. So thank yeah. you guys. Yep. And uh, I guess yep. for, for guys up here, anybody getting out turkey hunting, good luck. I know that opens tomorrow for a ton of people up yeah. here. So if you're getting out, go smash some birds and, Tag us in some photos and stuff. We'll try to share some stuff on social media. But I guess till next time, this has been another episode of Pass the Barb. We'll see you on the next one. Uh.